chat, welcome one and all. We are live with Inazuma 11.3 Bomb Blast because tomorrow we get Victory Road. I can't believe I'm saying that. I really genuinely cannot believe um, tomorrow is Victory Road demo day. But uh, somehow it is, so I'll wait for people to roll into chat. I'll say some hellos. In the meantime, for now I'll just leave. Fortunately, this intro doesn't get me copyright struck, so just have the enjoy the dub version of Good Kita, Good Forever. I I love the dub of Inazuma, right? But this this song kind of got done dirty, and it's the reason I was never that attached to Good Kita, which is actually one of the better openings of the whole show. But I was uh, born and raised on this one, so just have a listen while I'm setting everything up. Nine people here already, hello. We got Mr. Logan. Kara Simpson's been waiting here 15 minutes early. What's that? We got Jen. Jin, we've got Aerie. Who the hell's Jen? <laughs> that was both of you at the same time. Good forever. Put some put some hype into it, man. But um yeah, they had that singer again for the Hurricane, which was kind of a hard song to work with anyway. Like, I think the dub did a good job on Hurricane Heart, because Kiaida Hurricane, even in Japanese, is one of the less popular ones. I obviously just did a cover of that, released it yesterday with Delise, my uh, French karaoke partner for that. Um, we kind of made ourselves like the song a lot more because it was... Yeah, like we say, when an Inazuma song's unpopular or it's not as big with me, the main way I fix that is by doing a cover of it and then getting myself fully invested. So now having done the song in Japanese and just getting into the energy of it, that's fun. Um, but obviously, I was just making sure I'm not talking over the start of the game because I'm pretty sure I left this in a safe space. Um, yeah, question from Aaron the Bird. Didn't the singer also do the Go songs? Maybe. We can never find the credits for who actually did it. But the Go songs have so much more energy. So if it is the same guy, he kind of massively stepped up from his first two to the remainders. But they got so good with Go. Okay, yes, I can um, safely talk because... <laughs> I'm already in a random encounter. Come on, man. Um, welcome to the chat. Janus Greenway, we've got Duarte, we've got Xavi. Good to see you, buddy. Rico Ebonino, or Ebonino, perhaps. We've got McDavid. Um, again, the reason I've been streaming in Azuma 11.3, I was going to say lately, but it hasn't been lately whatsoever. Alex Greensmith in chat. Hiya. Um, I've been wanting to do streams, both of this and Hakuoki, the whole time. I've just been really busy with moving house or... Falling or going on holidays and other smash commentary abroad trips and every time I have had a free day I've basically fallen asleep because I've been doing too much um, But yeah, uh, let me know in chat by the way if the if the music is still Relatively balanced I can turn it down if need be but Again a reminder of why we're doing bomb blast today. It's mainly just a celebration to bring us into victory road because uh, we get the demo tomorrow, and that's amazing news. I'll not be streaming Victory Road on day one, but I will have a day one video going live tomorrow as soon as I've made it. TXM will be doing a stream, I'm pretty sure, but he, he wants to do daily streams, but only from like 6 until 7 p.m. Um, basically, if I want to do any Victory Road streams, I can do them any day. I just have to do them from 7 onwards, because we don't want to clash. We'd only be eating into each other's viewers, but yeah, if he's reliably streaming from six to seven most days, then I can potentially join in at any point. Um, but for tomorrow, I'll just, I'll play Victory Road, I'll mass record some videos offline, and then I'll release at least one tomorrow and probably one the day after as well, at a minimum. Um, but Bomb Blast 
in particular. We were streaming it in the past, and I'm also doing it today because I eventually want to make a montage of all of the Bomb Blast exclusive scenes. So stuff involving Hector Helio and the Apostles from the Sky. No, the Devil's Ar Devil Army Z in particular. Um, so not these guys, because spoilers, it's Aphrodite and the rest of Fire Dragon. Um, yeah, I will be making a new version of my old incomplete montage with all of those scenes, so whenever there is an exclusive scene, I'll just kind of go quiet and go straight into, like, I'm making a proper video mode. There is one at the end of this match, if I'm not mistaken. It might be a while afterwards. Um, but yeah, after I beat this match, there will be a point where I'm just kind of only voice acting and otherwise reacting to the gameplay because that's the grander purpose of playing Bomb Blast, it's to collect those scenes, but I still want to play it for you all anyway and enjoy some OG Inazuma before we move on to the new one tomorrow. So Torch and Gazelle are on the Korean team. Hiya Jordan, you're in the demo twice. And yes, my Victory Road team is going to have both Jordans on it. Don't be surprised, my midfield goats will be Jordan and Jordan. And Caleb Stonewall, I don't remember if you are in the demo, actually. Save it, Sharp! You're talking to me. You're talking to me, man. Oh, great one. Oh, thanks for calling me great, bro. Um, but let me catch up with chat, see who else has joined. We've got the Millennium Eye. What a name. I, I do indirectly work for the London Eye. And I've got the Millennium Bridge up here in Newcastle. So it's, it's like a bit of both. Um... But we've we've still got Alex. Like usually he he drops one comment and then leaves, so we've got him a little bit longer, which is nice. Again, Alexander Greensmith, if you watched the charity stream I did with TXM, he was one of the participants in that. He was one of my quiz opponents, for instance. Uh, we've got Mr. Tornado. We've got Hopip Enjoyer, my co-commentator for the Hakuoki streams that I should have been doing this whole time, but I haven't. Small Toaster has been here since the beginning. Joined so early, I didn't even get to shout him out in the first place. Caleb is in the demo, right? Thank you for that. Because um, I'd be interested in using him using him as well. Um, well. Obviously, I've got two midfielders decided already and absolutely no one else. Like All I know from my team is that it will have Bylong on it. It will have two Jordans. And it will have a certain Suzette Hartland. I'm absolutely using Sue Hartland and she's going to be a staple of most of the videos I make. So that's your little preview thing. But we have got almost 80 viewers right now. That's bonkers. We've only been here eight minutes. Uh, Thunder Beast can now be used on Thor. I was actually playing a game earlier today by myself. And it's funny we've got Prince of Redux mods in chat right now because I was watching presumably edited by himself or at least someone in his team um, the Inazuma 11 Great Road of Heroes mod as of like this week is now finished um, if you're not familiar with that mod I'm in it as a playable character uh, no I'm not no I'm in the uh, the one made by the French team actually Let's take that back I'm not in the Great Road of Heroes mod and now I never will be because the mod is, is finished um, but yeah, they, it's like the most, uh, who, yeah, Mark's on the bench. I was going to put him on the bench anyway. Um, I still get hate comments, by the way. Well, hate comments is a bit of an extreme way to put it, but I still get comments uh, voicing their disapproval of me always having Darren in goal instead of Mark whenever I can. Do I actually have to remove him from the entire squad? I forget that, but... Uh, oh, yeah, Prince says... He did add me to the mod because I was added... So the one I played in the TXM charity stream was a French mod um, called the Clan Cup. So they added me... Uh, well, they added my team to the game. So I wasn't in there other than a PNG as a coach. Um, but in the Great Road of Heroes mod, as a result of the charity stream, I was added alongside a lot of the donators. Um... I guess I just have to move him out of my first five. So yeah, I am in the Victory Road mod. That's a, that's a reminder of the way round it is. I can't select Mark. So what have I actually done? Have I not got Darren in the squad at all right now? Who? Right, Archer Hawkins kicked himself out. 
Dyram is in the squad. And he's going to stay in the squad, I think. Goodbye, Todd. Um, anyway, I need to finish my point on the on the Great Road of Heroes mod. Um, yeah, so I'm in it, which is cool. It's a playable character. They actually found... So I don't know if they, they made me a 3D model somewhat from scratch, but it's still based upon a character that happens to look a lot like me anyway. Um, it's really impressive. I, I've definitely tweeted it out in the past. Do we want to go Thor in... As a forward? Sure, I can do Thor as a forward. Um, let's take Nathan off and make sure I've at least got something going on. Mark has to go on the bench. I'm obviously not going to sack Jordan. Sean in defence. He doesn't actually have a defence move yet, so uh, let's go Sean on the bench. Hurley, I guess, can stay nearly as a forward. But, yeah, I want to use Thunder Beast as my... Oh, I uh, I have to have Sean for... Of course, this is the Snow Angel match, and Nathan has to be there as well. Okay, well, I'll put um, Sean in a sensible position then. Um, oh, Caleb has to go on the bench for now, I believe, and they bring him on at second at the second half. Uh, Scott Banyan has to go then, I suppose. Yeah, let's have that. Uh, Janus asking, "What are the swearing rules here?" I don't personally swear in my content, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna stop the chat from doing it. What have I messed up on again? Do I need Jude because of Chang Su Choi? I've, I really should read. Um, anyway, the point is, I want Thor in the front because it completes what I was saying about um, the Great Road of Heroes mod. Because I was watching Prince's montage of all the custom moves in the game of which there are 79 and they're all original in terms of concept and visuals but then the movements still have to basically every move has to replace something that's already in there so they're all technically reskins of of moves but the, the longer they were doing the, doing it the more convincing and original it all felt um but thunder beast is a move in Inazuma 11 where I'm so unfamiliar with how the move originally looks that I just kind of as soon as I was working out what everything is a reskin of um, there was three separate instances where I'm like ah oh, that one's Thunder Beast wait no that one's Thunder Beast oh that one's Thunder Beast and, and now it's gonna stop us Snow Angel of course, we have to join in for this snow angel. Um, but yeah, so I eventually worked out which one was Thunder Beast. Oops. Um, but yeah, it's, it's they always made sure that whenever they were adding a new character from Go Galaxy or from Ares and Orion, they would never try to put that character's move in the game because without being able to recreate the movements, you can't really recreate the move. I think the only exceptions were like Fire Lemonade and maybe one of the last resort type things where they did actually just use the, the name of the real move. Um, but yeah, they mostly created original moves based on what that character can do. Like Death Scythe Middle and Death Scythe Low was instead Aikido with just a normal Death Scythe without specifying direction. That one was really clever. Um, but yeah, Thunder Beast you can mod into just about anything and people will genuinely believe it's a new move because no one's no one's ever used it more than once. But I'm going to try and change that. I'm going to try and get my goal in with Thunder Beast and then immediately sub him off because this is still like a match that actually takes some level of effort to beat and I don't really have many of my good players on. Like, I want to use Dyrum, but uh, maybe not for too long. So... Alex, are you back in the UK now? Because you wouldn't be watching this from Japan, surely. Granted, I've watched, like, a London Smash tournament from within Montenegro before. It can happen, but at least that was a similar enough time zone. There's nothing second rate about what you're about to see. Here goes nothing. Yeah! And then he'll, he'll do Astro Gate, which is a move that the Great Road of Heroes mod had to replace with Fire Lemonade. It worked surprisingly well as a Fire Lemonade animation, but it still felt like they picked my move. You obviously don't need Astro Break and Astro Gate. Um, 
question from Denman, is it a DS or 3DS? So it's based on Inazuma 11 3, so it's technically a 3DS game and mod, but it's based on the original DS ended. It's not like a Go mod. We got Thomas Ashwell in here. One of my longest buddies. Meanwhile, uh, Whirlwind Drop is another move that you could probably mod over and everyone will forget about. But, I mean, I'll have a lot of disagreeers in, in chat, to be fair. Like, Alexander Greensmith is the OG Nathan fan. We've got a few of the Trobel Nation people in here. I think it's mainly Trobel herself who cares about Nathan and not so much the other people. But, um... Yeah, no, Morbius. That was that was a fun holiday. It was exact, almost exactly two years ago. Now I went for my birthday, which is on June nineteenth. If you want to get me a present, ha, ha, ha. We've made it to the free gameplay now in the match. I remember now, back in my old LP days, I I used to be quite conscious about uh, having videos go longer than twenty minutes. I was kind of operating in a time where people had shorter attention spans, I guess, with YouTube content. And obviously people have, like, even shorter attention spans now with the advent of shorts, but at least those people are watching shorts. That's like a dedicated thing. If people want to watch long form, then they do actually generally watch fairly long videos. But I took a long time to get my head around that mentality, so I always used to try and keep my videos fairly short and I would sometimes split matches into two halves if I felt things were getting too long, which nobody ever really liked, but I also didn't listen. Um, ah! I clicked the goal, but it's not as receptive as in the Go games. Um, yeah, I... Does Tiger Drive actually work before I... Yeah, he, he mastered it in the Qatar match. It's not gonna... He's not gonna accidentally miss while focusing on the thing with Axel, I hope. They should still probably be able to block this anyway. <laughs> Alex says, don't you mean YouTube pants? That's a deep cut joke, but <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, so I this match was one of those that got split into two parts. Fair point, Small Toast, to just put Subway Surfers gameplay next to the LPs. It's possible. I've got room on the left-hand side of this stream right now if anyone wants to donate some Subway Surfers footage. I really need some defenders with some actual moves. Uh, Nathan could probably come off the pitch now, to be fair, because he's got Whirlwind Drop at this point. Uh, Torch can't afford his move. We should be able to shot block with the wall, right? I'm going to take the risk on God Hand. Uh, I regret it already. Uh, Aphrodite is trying to steal the ball off Darren in the middle of it. Let's try and get a goal before we uh, ramble too much. Uh... Thor, the midfielder with no midfielding moves, of course. Um, I'm kind of fluffing this up. Oh, we've made it work! What's our strongest move that we've got at the moment? Um, could just go for Thunder Beast. Could go for Eternal Blizzard. You know what? I said I wanted to go for Thunder Beast. Let's do it and then let's take him off. And then I can concentrate on... Uh, playing well. Um, but yeah, I remember splitting this match into two halves. I think this might be a lie, but I remember part one of it was about 15 minutes. I might have split the match into two videos before there was even any actual controlled gameplay. I think part two of the match started with actually being able to control the gameplay, <laughs> which, if true, Sounds very bad. Otherwise, it would be at the halfway mark of this match, but... Oh, yeah, Nathan got a guaranteed goal. I completely forgot about that. We weren't even losing. Um, but, Thor, you can go anyway. Let's let's do... They're going to make me bring on Axel later when he has to do his thing with Austin, but uh, Nathan was slightly stinking up the joint a bit with no defensive moves, so let's do that swap. And then I'll have a little bit of a catch up on the comments as soon as I can. Jordan and Dyram together, the two best characters on the team, are getting uh, stuck in Evan's time. Oops. Well, Aphrodite, I can I can certainly play as you a fair bit in the Victory Road demo. Whirlwind Force beat Heaven's time? 
I'm not even over leveled. I've literally, I'm at the bare minimum amount of EXP. Why has that worked? That's ridiculous. But I'll take it. But the point is, I now have to get used to not calling him Aphrodite because Victory Road, um, they've based Aphrodite's design on his. You ready, Stonewall? Oh, please, Caleb Stonewall. Huh? He's sending Stonewall on? Oh, see you later, Alex. I guess you, you have still got the jet lag, even if you are now back in the UK. About time too. I thought you were on about the jet lag YouTube series, because I was watching the jet lag finale in Switzerland uh, today. If you've never watched jet lag the game, look it up. Give it a watch. It's one of the best things on YouTube. Why would you bring him on at a time like this? Because he's the GOAT, because Caleb Greggs. About him. What's that supposed to mean? Caleb Greggs. Um, but yeah, so the... Yeah, Aphrodite is based on his Ares form in the demo, so that's the one where I am not a god anymore! I am committing to being myself! And just everyone in the Ares dub match just goes by their actual names instead of their god nicknames, like Aphrodite, Poseidon, all of that is just not even referenced in Ares, so in the Victory Road demo. Be it just rushing the dub, or be it because it's an Ares reference, he is explicitly just called Byron Love only from from this point on. Um, but yeah, let's get Caleb on the pitch. He's at his Greggs, he's ready to, to play in the match now. I guess I have to get rid of Dyram, don't I? Because he has actively been getting in the way of doing of doing anything useful, sad to say. Um, and I still have to leave Austin because he's got an important thing coming up, but I don't have to do it yet. Um, Axel, it's still not asked me to... Okay, now I need Axel on as well, so fine. I guess, Xavier, you'll get your screen time in the Victory Road demo because you'll probably be on my team alongside Bylong as well. Um, so let's... Let's do that. And while it's half time, I'll just have a catch up on the chat a little bit. Um, we got some Portuguese dub trivia from Surprise Surprise, the Portuguese dub fan. Aaron the Bird saying, I don't think they ever referred to him as Aphrodite in the original anime dub. And that's true, to be fair. They do mainly just call him Byron in the show. Um, but obviously the game's... The Aphrodite name takes precedence, just as Torch does over Claude Beacons and Bryce Whitingale. So I always, my default is always the in-game nickname. Like, I still say Banyan rather than saying Scott or Scotty. Um, I think Darren Lechant is the one exception where I'll always consistently say both. Um, one other thing before I actually start the match, I've got three missed calls from my mum, so I better make sure it's not actually anything major. Um, let me have a quick read. She says that her messages in Google got mixed up and out of sync and I was just calling to say I haven't gone mad. Right. Oh no, she didn't say Google, she said Ghoul, which is a town near to where she lives. So there you go. Half doxed me, ma'am. I haven't told you the, the exact town, but since I've accidentally said Google while misreading it, there you go. Um, right Oh, Let's get back to the match. Where's my stylus? There's my stylus. Um, let me just check. There's no... Uh, Answer the calls on stream, says Adam. Well, my mum has definitely been in at least one video of mine before. I suppose they were mainly on Challenges Approaching, the my collab channel of old, which I did with Alexander Greensmith, who's just left. Um, yeah, she. I did a Chaps Play Cartoon Network Racing. And if you want to hear my mum's voice, she's definitely in that one. Um... She's probably not made it into anything on this actual main channel, but um, lol. So here's Caleb's backstory. Does, every, does everyone remember that Caleb has a personality redeeming backstory? Because I feel like a lot of people forget because he then continues to be an arsehole and it's great and everyone loves him being an arsehole anyway. He didn't need redeeming. He can just 
be an arsehole for the sake of it. That's that's my take on the matter anyway, but still love Caleb. So here he goes. Great pass, mate. He's had too many sausage rolls, he's overdoing it. In me mum's car, vroom vroom. <laughs> that's a tornado. Uh, Janus asks, have I seen the Arabic dub of the first opening? No, I haven't. I do want to listen to that, and I also want to listen to... Bet you in chat didn't know this exists. The Bulgarian intro to Inazuma 11. There is a Bulgarian dub of Inazuma... Oh no, it doesn't have a Bulgarian intro. There is a Bulgarian dub of the show, but it doesn't have an English dub. So I had to do a lot of research into that one when myself and Ayes, Inazuma Perfect Picks, were making our multi-language cover. Um, covering Tachiya Gurio in every language over the course of it. Um, we never we never got an Arabic segment in it because, to be frank, I didn't know there was an Arabic dub at the time. Maybe it's just, yeah, if there was an Arabic intro, I simply didn't know it existed. Um, whereas the Bulgarian dub I did know existed, it just has the English intro and then the rest of the content is in Bulgarian, so I know a Bulgarian guy and that's the reason I knew about the Bulgarian dub, a, a nice guy living in Ireland now called Nerf Kaiser. He's really cracked at Smash Brothers, he's like top two Mega Man players in the UK and Ireland, but he's also a big Inazuma fan. Um, had the pleasure of meeting him when I was in Ireland. Um, let's move our players up a little bit more than that. But yeah, he's originally Bulgarian, so he told me all about the Bulgarian dub of Inazuma, and I'd love to at least watch a little bit of it, um, even though I wouldn't have a clue what's being said. Oh yeah, Field of Force, forgot about this one, even though it's great, I love Field of Force. I just, yeah, they pack everything into this match in particular, so I'm always thinking about um, Tiger Storm and uh, the Astro Gate that never was. <laughs> you know, um, I suppose I've still got a chance to get a goal with Astro Gate. Yeah, I'm useless, and I'm dragging everyone down with me. I'm dragging everyone down with me in the typical kind of Archer voice. But I went for the anime style voice instead. They gave him the butter bing butter boom. Cause I use a lot of voices like this anyway. And Victory Road's gonna be no different. Cause all the characters are well big. And they're going to have a lot of this, especially in the RPG fist fighting sections. Um, I do want to come up with some new accents for the Victory Road characters to try in that full Let's Play when I'm eventually able to do it. Like When Story Mode Chapter 1 drops, I'll do like a blind playthrough of that as soon as possible. And then when the full game drops, I'll play it in my own time first and then start a main LP. Uh, so not blind, but still pretty quickly is the plan for that. But I want to at least create some new voices so not everyone is just an overlap. Um, one of the... One of the one... Wait, hang on. I've never done, like, uh, an Essex accent before in, in my LPs. I've never dedicated... Why is Axel run off over there? Oh, I guess I'll take the shot with Jude instead. Um, but yeah, I've never done Essex, and there's like another accent where I've, I've done occasional impressions in real life, badly, obviously. Uh, we've run out of accents I can actually do well at this point, but I'll do a few that I can come up with that's new, so I'm not just reusing a load. Um, but by all means in the chat, do suggest some accents that you want to see dedicated to... Um, characters because like the Liverpool accent I had no idea how to do until Jade Green popped into existence in Go and then uh, I had to learn not not just how to do a Liverpool accent but a girl's Liverpool accent well somehow I learned you know it was quite difficult overall because it's not something I was that familiar with and Miguel's voices weren't even that great to begin with but we worked it out. I'm gonna get perfect stone pressed here. Um, we'll try a trap dance. Um, 
And the point is, I can eventually learn. Uh, Aerie says Day to use the Essex accent for Shisendo or Shinohara. Uh, what? Use it, an Essex accent for the lass. I'll at least dedicate it to one of the lads, I think. Um, Jin says, I've never seen you do like a proper Southerner Oxford accent. Um, yeah, because I kind of originally. Like, both my Jude voice and my Jordan voices used to be more posh than they than they are now. Um, because Jude, you know, he was on Royal, so he wanted to sound a little bit more posh at the time, but over the course of it, I listened to, like, more <laughs> like in a posh accent. Um, yeah, I started listening to his real voice in more dub cutscenes and it started to become more an impression of that but I also didn't want him to be annoying when he was a main character it made more sense when he was a villain and then Jordan he started off really posh for a couple episodes as well because he's like you know he's into his poetry he's into his um what's the word for it again just his pro pro pronouns no what's the word it starts with pro doesn't it um, God, I've completely forgotten, uh, like, not haikus, prophecies? And it's not prophecies either, I've completely forgotten anyway, but it's, it's fancy words, so I, I made him sound posh, but I just, I liked him too much, so I didn't want him to sound ridiculous, so I kind of toned that down as well. Um, but an Oxford accent, I've obviously not been to the south of England very much, so I can't tell the south ones apart that much, but... Proverbs! There we go, thank you chat! Can't believe I said pronouns! Oh, proverb is the word, good lord! Um, but yes, yeah, somebody should have an Oxford or a deep south accent. That was also a good, um, way of knowing how big the delay is between what I'm saying and when the chat uh, can respond because that in my time was like a minute and a half it felt like before I could read your responses um, Ted Brower says can I do a Limburg accent at least I know to call it Limburg and not Limburg but no not really I could I only I can only do Dutch accents while sounding really stereotypical and at that point they just sound a bit mean especially when so much of my audience is Dutch or or Flemish anyway I don't I don't want to annoy people with a with a rubbish impression of like Dutch person speaks English you know um, West Midlands to stop the advance of the that's true I've not done a Brummy accent for anybody in my series ever but I'm not very good at it yet but maybe now is the chance to learn because um, yeah I couldn't even attempt to do one for you right now like, I literally don't know where to start with doing a Brummy accent but um, like I've got one friend who lives in Solihull, I can do an impression of him. I guess his his accent's not very strong, but I don't know if you know this, but my Nathan Swift voice is just an Alexander Greensmith impression. That's all there is to it. Nathan was his favourite character, uh, and obviously he's a lot of people's favourite character, but I didn't know many people for the first couple of years um, of enjoying this series, so whenever I looked at Nathan, I just thought of Alex. And Alex's voice has changed a lot over the last few years. Like, my Nathan voice is more, shall we say, prepubescent Alex from when I was 16 and he was 14. And now his voice sounds absolutely nothing like it, but it kind of lives on in the form of my Nathan Swift. If you, uh... If you feel, but, um... Yeah, what what was the... Now that, I, now that I'm not playing gameplay, I can read, um chat a little bit easier because yeah there was a call for so i'll try and do my essex and i can have a look at oxford i can have a look at brummy um shinohara will need something i don't just want to give her the normal girl voice but we're not going to have any official dub voices to base things on yet and it is true i could just use a, a true traditional posh accent um, a little bit less sparingly, 
If I use it on someone who's less important, then I don't have to worry about that character being annoying. Because it's very easy to do the Sherlock accent. I just don't want to ruin a character like I did with French Xavier. Um, I also had somebody in chat saying, do you do many American voices? Loads. Far too many. I'm specifically trying to avoid um, doing more American accents because... We did it. A lot of characters have canon American it. voices anyway. Because you've got Eric and Bobby. My voice for Bobby is not very American, but Eric I just turn into an American for the uh, for the duration of whenever he's speaking. It just doesn't stand out as a different accent because it sounds kind of normal. You know, like, it's not that big of a switch up for me to go from Brit to American. Um, but then obviously he's got his whole team in Inazuma 3 with Dylan and Mark. And then in Go, you get Dodge, who's also American. And then in Chrono Stones, you get everyone from the future. So there's Faye, there's Zanuck, there's Simeon. I love doing the Simeon voice. The Simeon voice is one of my favorite ones to do because you've just got to sound a little pissed off while also sounding incredibly over-the-top American. I'm going to take over the world and you're going to watch me. Um, but then Go Galaxy, I was trying to avoid using the American accent too much on characters who don't have official dub voices, because a lot of them could feasibly be American, because Terry is a basketballer. So I, originally I was just going to give Terry just a thick American accent. Uh, oh, we've obviously got Mike from Texas. My, my only Texas accent in the entire series. We got Mac, then there's Alpha and Beta and all of them. Um, but yeah, Terry, he's basketballer, so that makes you think American, but in the end I kind of did a hybrid between the gruff voice and the American, just based on uh, wanting him to stand out a bit more, but there's also, isn't there another character? Well, there's Zach Avalon, who's a descent, not a descendant of, an ancestor to Xana, who canonically has an American accent. So you have to also think, does Zack get a futuristic American accent? Ultimately, I said no. I think the accent is part of the future. It's not part of the Zanuck family tree, specifically. Um, just catching up on... Uh, Aerie says, Speaking of French Xavier, I had to open your Inazuma 2 Let's Play to get a dialogue screenshot between him and his dad to show a friend I was info-dumping to. The French voice cursed me. Yeah, fair. Do regret Thanks that one. So much, Prince everyone. says, Challenge yourself and do a thick New York or a Texas accent. So Texas, obviously, we did from Mac, but uh, the New York, how do you do New York without it just being... Well, isn't that... I guess that's a bit of... Bada bing, bada boom! Again, like, that's the Barbie and the, the Archer Hawkins! There's probably a way to do a more localised New York. Um, but the thing is, whenever whenever I do my American accent, that's Eric and Simeon and uh, anyone else from the future, or on... I don't know, the Navy Invaders can have this voice as well. Remember Orion? Um, I don't really know what American accent I'm doing. It's in my mind just the US accent. Um, so, uh, yeah. I'm going to have to keep an... That's true. Aphrodite had a posh accent as well in my LPs based on that canon voice, but I ended up toning that down as well because I want Aphrodite to be liked. Uh, and he still needed to sound a little bit villainous where appropriate and then tone it down. But yeah, we are coming up very soon to a Hector Helio scene. Um, so when that's happening, again, as a reminder, I will completely stop communicating with chat for a few minutes. I will not say anything other than reading out the dialogue and listening to the in-game text. And I'll give it like time to speak because, again, that will go towards the... Deep future video, all Bomb Blast exclusive scenes. So, just gonna have to be careful to keep an eye out on that. I never got to do Astro Gate, that's a shame. Oh, but we first got to reveal to everyone that Austin. Oh, I'm only 11, aren't I? Or is that the previous match? Yeah, it is.
<laughs> Adam says, do sign language to talk to us. It's true, the face cam will still be on and that will be getting cut out of the actual video. Unfortunately, I can't speak sign language. Speak sign language? Is that... Is that correct? <laughs> um, I can't use sign language. Okay, it's not the scene yet. Phew. Airy Hun was saying to do New York to just say, Hey, I'm walking here! Which, <laughs> to be fair, uh, if I keep that going, um, if I just I sound a little more like I'm gonna push you out of the way to get across the road. <laughs> okay, that's not very good, but maybe with, maybe with practice. Um, let's have a quick flick up, see if I've missed anything, because I've tried to read out every single suggestion means if I haven't said yours yet, that means I didn't see it. Um, oh yeah, we've got to take Sean off the team. Sad. And we've got to take Janus off the team. Incredibly sad. Um, hiya, Kevin. But it's like, it's very... It's taken a long time to run out of accents because can't stress enough, this is the seventh in a Zuma 11 game, and there's new characters in all of them. So, eventually after six LPs, we were going to start running out of accents I can do, but at least there's a few. Um, who will be the Essex character? We'll see. Probably one of the tall guys. Red Nass, what are your thoughts on Bobby being the only Rhyme and 2 member that's not in beta? Didn't notice, to be honest. I never used Bobby anyway, sad to say. Samford's not in it either. Finally, Jordan gets picked over Samford. Yes, this is the scene that I I dislike the most in Inazuma 11 history, where Jordan is permanently taken off the team and David Samford fills his space. But he's got his own back now. Now Victory Road has two Jordans. How many Samfords are there? None! LOL! I don't even dislike Samford. I just... <laughs> he just... Um... Yeah. <laughs> He's a... Uh, he takes Jordan's place, so he has to eat the flak for it. Ted Brower says, Have you done a Welsh or a Northern Irish accent yet? Fair point. So Northern Irish, yes. My... So obviously Soul is the Irish character, but I would say that his accent from, from me is more based on Northern Irish than regular Irish. Um, I have a couple of mates in Northern Ireland, so whenever I do an Irish accent, I'm doing them. It's more the Republic of Ireland whose accent I haven't done. Um, but Welsh? Yeah, I've never done Welsh. I've at least watched enough Nia in Xenoblade 2 now and to get a, a reasonable recollection. Just, if I get it wrong, then it's, uh, it's, it'd be too late to turn back at that point. So I'd have to make sure I could stick to Welsh. And Cockney's been mentioned. My fair lady, um, I guess my problem with the Cockney accent... That's not it at all. Hang on. Right. One second. Let's get some Cockney tutorials up on YouTube. Because... Jordan's left the team, and I'm really sad about it, so I'm going to not play Bomb Blast for a second. Um, YouTube Cockney... That to make sure to not leave it as just YouTube Cock for, for a while. Um, learn the Cockney accent with Jace, Jason Statham. Uh, let's pick a pick a shorter one than that. Or I'll find just a, just a few minutes of it. Because my dad did some acting in... It's recommending my own live stream. That's incredible. Um, yeah, he was the main character, main male lead in my fair lady. So he had to learn it a lot. But did you know that Cockney? Did you know Cockney used to be a pejorative class. term for the working yeah. class? Nonsense. Yeah, nonsense. It's the accent, it's the accent of the true, true Londoner. 
Who's a true Londoner? Who's a true if Londoner? You're if you're thinking of that guy in Mary Poppins, an nonsense. That's an American imposter. Real... So I can kind of do it, but the more I do it, it slips more into that big brutish. Uh, the type of voice I was trying to avoid for Archer Hawkins and give to all of the big guys in Inazuma. So I have to find a way to make it different without slipping into old habits. Let's do a little bit more. Now, if you're thinking of Michael Caine, he is a true Londoner. He's a Cockney and he's a legend. <laughs> but how do you, well, speak, how do you like speak like Cockney, you ask? Well, my son, there are a few rules to follow <laughs> if you want to sound like a true Londoner. <laughs> Everything, this bomber exclusive cutscene is wild. True. Like taught ya. That's the ah uh, sound. sound. Well, I'm doing it alongside introducing an Essex Regular accent as well. So are they going to clash? Doctor. Yeah. But Aaron the Bird saying that's just your Kevin it, voice. Doctor. True. Doctor. Yeah, if I do that, it's just going to become Kevin, I feel. So I might have to pass on that one. But again, I'm going to fall quiet in case this is the Bomb Blast exclusive Hector Helio scene. Once I've added these... Well, speaking of Kevin, uh, let's put him immediately not in the squad. Sam for even further. Oh, I have to, I have to physically go there. Um, well, let's get the game saved then first. Before we do anything like that, we've been streaming for 46 minutes, so I reckon I've got at least an hour and a half in me. Um, we'll definitely finish this chapter and then probably a little bit more. We've got Chopper! He's Cockney as well! He's from the proper Dan South in London! London! Um, Essex practice. Um, Austin, I'm sorry we were all so hor horrible to ya. Um, Good luck in... Oh, I'm messing it up. So, again, Essex, I'm just doing an impression of my friend Jack. Um, but usually when I'm doing that, I'm making up my own phrases. So actually reading it. Uh, Mark, get some of those big players to sign some stuff for me while you're out there, won't you? Yeah, Sam, you're getting a new voice. Oh, no, this is getting in the way of it. So you want some making up my own phrases... It's easy, because then I just, I picture myself being him, um, but when I'm actually raiding it, it becomes a little bit tougher, but fine. Anyway, that'll, that'll do. Lest I slip into the entire stream being uh, an Essex accent, but um, yeah, definitely need to get me Brummy practicing, because... That's a very distinct accent, and I don't really know how I've not done it before. And if people enjoyed the, the little Cockney video that I brought up um, a while ago, maybe I'll just find an equivalent Brummy one. We'll dedicate, like, five minutes of the stream to uh, learning the Brummy accent. <laughs> oh, random encounters, man. At least Victory Road doesn't have this. Um... I still have to win them all pretty much to avoid getting super under leveled, but I need to change my squad so it's not just three defenders because I have approximately one person at the moment who can score a goal. Prince says, listen to Tom Skinner's accent. Which accent was that for again? Um. Keanu asks, when is the beta coming out? I know you saw the thumbnail, King. The beta's coming out tomorrow. 11 a.m. UK time. Like, it is... This is the send-off. This is the celebration. We are getting the demo. Like, it's it's time. It's time now. Um, let's have... Austin Obbs. And Scotty Banyan, fine, we'll give Sanford a little bit of time in the sun. That ain't Jordan, but it'll do, I, I guess. <laughs> Brawl of saying, I thought you were just going to do an accent on purpose. You just sounded like you normally do. Either you're making the, taking the piss out of my accent, or my ability to make them, and I'm not sure which one's worse. Um, we're heading to the... Airport. Getting a few Hakuoki mentions in chat. I mean, hey, we've got 85 viewers at the moment. Screenshot this, by the way. This this comment predates Zoomers themselves. 
This game knew what was up. Inazumas has always been a term, and now we can use it to... to for all of the people who joined the series at Victory Road, I am hereby calling them Inazumas. If your first Inazuma game was Victory Road, so if you watched an anime season before that, it doesn't count, but if you've joined the series with Victory Road, you are an Inazuma. <laughs> and that is canon now. Um, now we've got 88 viewers. I could put Hakuoki on a bit later and lose them all. I'd gladly do it because you all know how much I enjoy playing that game. It's been ages since I last played it. Obviously that depends on uh, the availability of Hopip Enjoyer, but probably realistically best saved for a dedicated stream uh, because we've still got some more to do in Bomb Blast. Finally, special shout outs to the dubbing team who actually put the word on the top screen and here. Maybe it would just had the words in English in the original Japanese game, but I kind of doubt it. These words, Tokyo Oedo International Airport, are in English. Uh, so please do let me know if it was always like that. But also, now that I've read it in detail, Tokyo Oedo? Is that what it's called? I am doing some googling. Um, sort of. So, Oedo definitely seems to be a thing. It's mostly just spelled with one O, but it's the same as Mark, you know, Endo Mamoru being technically correctly E-N-D-O, but everyone spells it with a U on the end anyway. Um, Haneda Airport. So this is where we are right now. We're in Ota City in Hanedakuko, um, interestingly. Um, but yeah, Oedo is mentioned, but it's technically Oedo Onsen. They couldn't fit Oedo Onsen on here, so they've had to shorten it just uh, a little bit. Right, well, while we're here... Let's, let's spend five minutes on how to do... Ooh, there's a, there's a female accent version. If I want to dedicate it to Shinohara specifically, um, let's just pick you for now. In the next eight minutes, I'm going to train you to understand the main right. pronunciation. We don't have time for an intro, unfortunately, mate. Favourites. Not favourites. That's one of my favourites. Wait. Here's another. Did you hear it? Favourites. That's one of my favourites. One of my favourites to watch is Coutinho. Not uh, for anyone who's favorites. not familiar Here's with the Brummie accent, I don't know why I'm slurring it again. Um, the Brummie accent is from Birmingham. Nation. Birmingham Nation. in England. It's the not second Nation. biggest city so we've had in the country. And, and when I say the country, so I mean England, like because the second biggest city in the UK is baby. Edinburgh. Oh, baby. Who's your favourite baby? Baby is Coldplay. the word. It's Coldplay. Birmingham's the second biggest city in England behind London. Now remember, all and, uh, it do, there is not a single right character in the Inazuma series who's so ever got the Brummie sound. accent. There which is why I've never practiced Fantastic. it. All right, so I'm let's surprised get another they... Uh, oh, this subscribe. is an important phrase to practice. It's how would a Brummie say it? Well, don't forget to like and subscribe, all right? So if you hear that, like... Don't forget to like more. and subscribe, all right? Don't forget to like mm. and subscribe, all right? So if you hear that... Yeah, it's tricky. I'll try and practice this a little bit more off stream. We'll do one more phrase and then we'll get rid of it. Uh, I'll probably end up watching this entire video. Because it'd be nice to finally have a Brummie accent somewhere in me series. Seeing as Inazuma has overlooked the accent so much, maybe maybe the responsibility is on me. I'll do that for you, alright? I promise. I'll do remember, that for you, alright? I promise. Remember, remember, I've got a score, remember. though. <laughs> How great is that? All right, I've got Remember. one more example for you. In reality, that don't matter. Matter? matter. I do that anyway. Can That's just my actual that? That's accent. Really matter. fantastic. Now, this word takes me into the next okay. pronunciation feature that we'll look at, which is the glottal T. Now, this is not specific. That's enough, to unfortunately. Anyway, because back back to the video game. 
Uh, Roloff says that sounds a bit different from the Brummies I was living with last year, but I'll watch a few different videos on it. Saru says try the Scouser accent. Uh, that is Jade Green's exclusive property and also um, all the players on Kirkwood in Go because they canonically have a Brummy accent. Like, uh, let's see if this foreign nosh is all it's cracked up to be, right, shall we? Right. This line annoys me so much because. So, I used to live in Middlesbrough, where there's like a posh food place. It's like a, it's like a healthy foods place. And it's called Nosh. And there's also this line in the game, let's see. Let's see if this foreign Nosh is all it's cracked up to be, shall we? Because to me, Nosh means food. It's the same as Scran. Scran's like the Newcastle word for food. And then Nosh is the Yorkshire word for, for food. However, unfortunately, the word nosh ended up with another meaning at some point in time. I'm pretty sure it meant food first, and it's definitely still a thing. You will occasionally hear the term nosh for food in Yorkshire, but I have had to completely phase it out of my vocabulary now because apparently it means something else. And if when I've I basically sent somebody a message at one point and said, should we go get some nosh? And they just kind of went, uh, what? And I was like, what's wrong? I was only asking if you wanted some food. They're like, all right, uh, yeah, maybe. And I just thought, what have I done here? And then I looked it up, or somebody told me, because it was a group chat, yeah, at least it wasn't a one-to-one -one conversation. Yeah, I can't say that anymore. Now I just have to say scran every time, and that's a shame, because I loved that word, and it's even in Inazuma 11, as proof that I wasn't capping. It's been a word the whole time. However, I'll never say it again after this stream, because unfortunately the world's not very nice, and it takes funny words and it ruins them. Right, carrying on. What's in <laughs> what's in this treasure chest? Uh, wow, a, a yellow token. <laughs> Why is that door by the... Oh! There's a competition route match. Uh, against... Hokkaido. Oh no, it's farm. Farm would definitely say nosh when referring to the word food. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Nosh is now part of my vocabulary, thank you, Tail, coming from somebody whose name I'm absolutely not going to read out loud, but that username and that message is not a good mix. <laughs> oh dear, it seems I have screwed up again. <laughs> Why is farm at the airport, says Walter. Good question. Anyway, let's save the game because... I think we've got to have a Nelly cutscene first and then a Hector Helio one, but technically they could overlap. Um, but yeah. Blimey! I'm being taken on the team instead of Jordan! That sucks! Um, I might get hungry on the plane. So, Jack, you never want to fly with Ryanair? or with EasyJet because they will not feed you, but generally if you're with any reputable airline, like British Airways is an expensive one, but KLM is a, is a good example of, uh, they will fly you from anywhere in the UK to Amsterdam in an hour, but they'll still feed you, like, um, you know, not, not a proper meal because it's only an hour's flight, but they still give you some like um, tomato bread crisps. They're not even that good, but I always say, I never say no to food on an aeroplane. And they have tomato juice, which is like one of my favorite drinks. So I always say yes to that. If I'm going for a longer flight, it will obviously be a, be a Bloody Mary instead. Um, then I've never had a flight longer than a few hours that's not fed me, unless it was my Ryanair flight to New York. <laughs> Rinsler says, British Airways mentioned, if it's not a Boeing, I'm not going. A good phrase. I haven't used British Airways in years now because um, they just got way more expensive. I pre Pretty much everywhere I go, I will do a KLM flight to Amsterdam Schiphol from Newcastle and then anywhere else from from there. But also, when whenever I'm going into the US, I really recommend JetBlue. Uh, I flew to Costa Rica with JetBlue. That's the New York airline. Free Wi-Fi the whole time. 
and they fed me as well, both on the on the London to New York, but also on the New York to Costa Rica as well. So I got fed twice. Obviously, it was two different flights, but um, yeah, never once paid for Wi-Fi on all four of those flights, including the way back. So I really like JetBlue, and I will give full credit to KLM as an airline. I will not give full credit to Amsterdam Schiphol, the airport, because they cancel a lot of flights, and I've gotten stuck in the Netherlands on more than one occasion, and they are criminally understaffed for an airport that large. And obviously, this is not their fault, but because of Brexit, I have to go through their extremely long passport security lines every single time, which is not something I had to do before 2019. That's not their fault, but it becomes more of an issue with them than anywhere else that I go to. Jin has deleted Rinsler's message about if it's not a Boeing, I'm not going. Glad to see that my uh, mod chat rolls are not being abused. Um... But anyway, Ted Brower asks, have you ever been to the eastern part of the Netherlands? I've pretty much been everywhere. I've never been as high as Friesland. Um, I can't really tell you where I've been in the Netherlands without doxing my friends. Because like, I've been to meet Spire, for instance. I've been to meet Dragon Blaze. And a lot of those guys live kind of well out of the way. Um, but... Yeah, that... The most eastern I've ever been in the Netherlands was when I went to Spire's house. If you don't know who Spire is, you probably know uh, Masheru Kaisais. Uh, but I went to see him, and that's the most eastern I've ever been. I obviously can't tell you where that was, but take my word for it that it was pretty... Wait, no, you said east. I'm talking about the west. That's the most western I've ever been. Obviously, I've been to the eastern Netherlands, because that's where bloody Amsterdam is. Everyone's been to the eastern Netherlands. I've swept that entire side. Oh, it's yeah, it is in English. Tokyo Oedo International Airport in English in the cutscene. Interesting. Um, but yeah, I've pretty much, apart from Friesland, I've been everywhere in that side. I've done Amsterdam, I've done Rotterdam, I've done Zortemir. Um, Utrecht is a lot more central, but I've been there multiple times. Uh, if you can name it, I've there's every chance I've been. Wait, no, my directions suck. They are all on the west. You were asking the right thing. So yes, the most eastern I've ever been is uh, Spire's house. Right. I'll get there eventually. I live in the northeast. That's why I should uh, keep reminding myself. You can do it. I know you can. Leiden, I've got a request for. Leiden is the second place I ever went in the country. I did Amsterdam when I was a kid, and then I went to Leiden as a as an adult. Hector, what are you doing? The airport for Leocot is leaving. Aye, wait for me. Hector, you are late. <laughs> Sorry, friends. I was so excited last night that I could not sleep. Hey, did you hear? Levin Murdoch will be commentating on all the matches at the FFI finals. Oh, uh, Levin Murdoch himself? So I can finally show him that I have become the world-class player he told me I could. Yaha! <laughs> this is great news, Hector. Hector. You're no longer the little crybaby we once bullied so. You have become a fine man. A great man. You carry our dreams with you now. You must bring glory home with you. We will. You will see. Thank you, friends. Time to go, lads. Yes, Chief. Soon, you'll be able to meet him at last. This Mark Evans of whom the boss always speaks. Yes. I look forward to the day when I finally face you, Mark Evans. Team, the time is here. It is time to take on the world at last. Yeah! I was so tempted to bring out the, the Essex accent as practice for Victory Road or just on the spot brummy someone up, but it doesn't make sense for an African team, unfortunately. 
who, again, my Hector voice is just me trying to impersonate his in-game accent. That's why it sounds bad. My Hector voice is not good, but it's me trying to do his official one, which appears within the same video, so kind of have to. Um, no, I've never been to Door Direct. I'm not familiar with that one. Enshenda? Technically, yes. Um, one of the days where I got stuck in Amsterdam, they got me to stay in a hotel in Enshenda. Um, had to go away from the airport itself just to stay the night somewhere. But yeah, Leiden um, was the second place I ever went to. I spent multiple days there before going to Utrecht for Syndicate, a Smash tournament. Um, <laughs> so we've what else really is in there? made it to Leacott, also known as the Football Islands. But um, for another fairly big city that I've been to in the Netherlands, I've been to Almere, or Almere, uh, A L M E R E. That's a. It's not like a massive city, but uh, I went to Primark there. I got my slippers from. From Dutch Primark in Almira, uh, so that was a that was a good one. Um, really interesting city, actually. A lot of the students are basically living in container crates converted into. I mean, they're not actual container crates, but it's a, it's a it's a structure that's built to look like multicolored shipping crates, and really interesting. I need to be quiet here, actually, because the um, somewhere on this island, I don't think it's yet. But the um, uh, the Devil Army Z have a cutscene within the next ten minutes, I think, because it's definitely in this exact map. Chapter five. Welcome to football. Millennium Ajax. Ajax. What's your favourite Dutch football club? I can only name Ajax. I'm not that good. I've been to the Netherlands a lot. That doesn't mean I know their football teams, unfortunately. Yeet Kopsky, it hurts to always hear Brits trying to say Dutch city names. I'm dumbing them down a fair bit, in fairness, for the, for the sake of everyone actually understanding what I'm on about. But uh, there's a few where I... Like, whenever I was in Utrecht, they always corrected the way that I was saying it until I, I'd do it like three times in a row and then they always tell me the third one I did was perfect and then I'd get it wrong the next time so I guess if I do it three times Utrecht Utrecht? Never mind <laughs> anyway you get it but um, I won't speak Dutch so I do, I do my best but at least I know Limburg instead of Limburg and Friesland instead of Friesland and Zeeland instead of Zealand, but I don't think, I, well I've definitely never been to uh, the Zeeland area. But anyway, not everybody in the chat knows their, knows their Dutch geography, so we're going to move on from that one. It's, yeah, so Amsterdam and uh, Rotterdam. I never quite got the hang of the proper Rotterdam one. Because uh, when I was in Rotterdam I wasn't really there with locals much. I was mainly with my English language group because I was commentating Dreamhack Rotterdam and also went to check out the former Eurovision venue um, of Eurovision 2021 while I happened to be in the city but I wasn't actually hanging out with Dutch people that much. Uh, let's have a look at the English text again actually. Leopot Leocott International Airport. So was it always like this in uh, in Japan, is English the native language of the island of Leocott? Who knows? We've got Mr. Slap in chat by his original full Mr. Slapnut title. He has no idea about geography, but he is a big JP fan. We forgive him for being a JP fan, though, because he's a very much on-the-rise esports commentator, and no doubt, once I start commentating Victory Road tournaments, I will be vouching for him to also join in to do the same thing. I'm not running any Victory Road tournaments at the moment, but I know that TXM will be, so you can expect to see me um, commentating some of his tournaments. And also, I'm in touch with the French community, Rose Griffin, to be like a restreamer for whenever they want to host a tournament. And France, if you don't know, they're like the goats at competitive Inazuma. 
Spain are really good, and obviously Japan is like the actual best, but Japan France is firmly the second best at the game. The Strikers World Cup was a two years on the trot, a grand final between Japan and France, and then France also had a lot of sub-teams, like Sub-Saharan Africa was French players of descent from places like Ivory Coast, um, and they had, oh, what was it? There was a team that was like half Mauritius and half Aruba, so like the Dutch Caribbean island. Um, so that was like a half French, half Dutch team, but all of the French associated teams did really, really well. And um, yeah, they want to host some Victory Road tournaments and I would be hopefully in the future streaming a lot of those with English commentary. Um, but nothing's official with a date just yet, but just keep an eye out for it. I'm going to head to Leocott Island and be temporarily really quiet just in case it turns into a dark uh, Devil Army Z cutscene. Yeah, we've got a... So Jack gets his wallet stolen. I'm pretty sure Devil Army Z appear after we recover the wallet, but before we leave. So, should be safe for now. Aaron the Bird says maybe you could end up commentating with Hino one day. Hey, I certainly applied to be an ambassador. It makes complete sense that they only picked Japanese content creators because I wouldn't be able to understand the meetings. Um, but... Yeah, the only English language influencers, if you will, to ever do anything official within Azuma. Um, it's technically the one who ended up becoming a voice actor of, like, Axel and Xavier in the Ares anime. Um, Nate wants to battle. But the only one who's worked for in Azuma 11 as an influencer is um, the Yokai Watch guy again. What's he called? completely forgotten all of a sudden. Um, they were in my iceberg. You know who I'm talking about anyway, right? Uh, right, let's just... Hold on. Chat will have already worked, told me by now, but because I'm on a, like a 30 second delay. Abdallah Smash, I remembered it on my own. I started typing it into YouTube, but yeah, Abdallah Smash and one other guy that he kind of knew. Um, they did, like, a first reaction video on the Level 5 channel, and those are the only English language influences they've ever worked with on the show, but... TXM and I, we both make our names known, like, we both want to put ourselves out there if Level 5 ever need official promotion for Victory Road from actual English language inner tubers. But I can veritably confirm that we have not been contacted at this time. Well, maybe, maybe in the future, eh? If they want to make me a voice actor in the game, my my DMs are open. What a shot! Is that actually what a shot? Is that just the voice line that they ripped from the actual soccer battles, or maybe they put it in the soccer battles because they recorded it for that line? Uh, interesting conversation, but um. I'm seeing more messages getting retracted from the Trouble Nation group. They are without their namesake today. But this is yours, no? Italian accent. I've been talking already about um, accents that I've been doing over the Let's Plays, but the Italian one is a really interesting one to talk about as well, because I was not very good at the Italian accent or the Australian accent when I was doing this main Let's Play. And... The, the Australian one, it was too late to save it. I'd already recorded every episode that needed the Australian accent in Inazuma 3. It helped me out in the end when I made Gammon Checker Australian. Who the blimmin' heck was that? So I was able to give a good Australian accent, or good-ish, for Gammon Checker, but I completely ruined it for the big waves. But for Paolo Bianchi, my, my Italian accent was initially not very good. Um, but then... Over the course of making this Let's Play, I like lived in America for three months, uh, working in a summer camp, and there were a lot of Italians living there, and they actually just taught me a lot. So I obviously didn't know Bjorn of Ryusei Boys for years until after that point. Um, 
But yeah, some Italian students just kind of taught me. Yeah, it is not grazie, it's grazie. We pronounce every letter. Um, and then I kind of took the knowledge back to the rest of Inazuma 3, because I'd only really voiced Paolo lines as a character at that point. I hadn't done his match. Um, so, I uh, was able to improve about that as over the course of it. Benjamin, spelled as Benjamin, possibly? Ask him when am I next doing robots in Ireland. Uh, I don't think it's got a date yet. They're usually in October. I'm not necessarily going this year because uh, last year my trip to literally from Newcastle to Ireland, one of the shortest, cheapest flights you can possibly do, ended up being my second most expensive holiday of the entire year behind only Australia because I had to ship a heavyweight robot on a ferry and uh, float accommodation for 11 people who did all pay me back in the end but I still had to make an initial down payment of like a grand <laughs> to have that place for enough time um, so I'm thinking for financial reasons I'm probably having a year off and then I might do it the year afterwards but I might get tempted as long as I can get away with just flying there with just my featherweight like I can't afford to do it with a heavyweight again but the, the heavyweight team that I'm a part of very much still want to go so the moment I say yes the moment I start paying for things so uh, I'm thinking probably skip this year and do it next year but I if I if I change my mind I will let you know <laughs> look at these humans their suffering and misery will please the demon lords greatly what shall we do, Destra? Shall we begin their torment now? No, not yet. We have no need for haste. Let them continue with this FFI. Let them fight among themselves. It will prove fitting amusement for the demon lords. They will tire themselves out. And when they are too tired to fight, then we shall strike. So basically, Destra, you're taking the coward's way out. You don't think you can beat these guys on fundies, so you're going to beat them when they're all really tired and rubbish at the football. Did I get that treasure chest item in the end? No. At least I remembered this time. Oh yeah, this is also, by the way, I'm the one who builds the tower. I'm the one who built holds the power, so come on, rise up. Shout it. Oh, I really wished it was them. We've got a player called Walker. Uh, interesting. Yeah, it was right here on this map. So it wasn't on my first um, trip here, to be fair. I think I at least need to respawn the map. But I hope I've still got Aryan chat as a representative of the Inazuma Wiki because officially the... Oh, Benjamin was actually at the last event. Well... Uh, I, I, I take it we didn't meet, um, but great to know you were at least watching. Yeah, my little purple one, Euphoria, was there, and then the big heavyweight Immersion won the whole thing. So I can't take credit for anything Immersion did. I just helped to fix it a little bit, but I was not super important while I was focusing on the featherweight. Um, but it definitely helps to fund the trip, you can say that. Uh, I'm going to hop out of this map, go somewhere else, and then come back because officially, yeah, chat's already worked it out. Um, let me just hop on the bus and heal. So officially, Pants, Mats uh, you know, Riku Matsushita, you are supposed to encounter her and her team in this map. Um, their, their spawn point is the central mark, it's central park. And there's no way I beat them, even if I do encounter them, because they're like, Super duper duper difficult. Um, does Austin have Tiger Storm at the moment? Yeah, just in case I encounter them. Um, you're meant to like come back to them later. And when I did the match against Pants in the original Let's Play, I'd like I'd made it to the American camp, and uh, so I'd gained like quite a few more levels, especially because I was doing all the competition route stuff as well in that Let's Play. So I was like well above the level curve. Whereas here, I'm 
literally doing bare minimum, and I'm at an earlier point in the game as well. But the weird thing was, I was very surprised. Oh, I got Nara, that's cool. I was very surprised when I found Pants in the Let's Play. Part of that was because I'd never heard of her before, and I just genuinely didn't realise that this game had a character called Pants in it. But also, even in retrospect, it's still weird that I found them where I did, because I found them in the American camp. They're not meant to be in the American camp, so maybe my theory is you can have a first encounter with Pants' team anywhere, but then all subsequent encounters have to be here. So if you want to get Pants on your team in Inazuma 11.3, you have to take on her team here, and then also the uh, the token machine for recruiting her after you win the match. Fist of Justice is so bad, man. Um, yeah, after you win that match, you can then recruit her from this spot. But I, I want to see some more investigation on whether me encountering them in the American camp was just like basically a glitch or if they if they are just a rare spawn in the American camp because I could never get them to appear there again. I spent ages trying to get a second match with them in the American camp and I just couldn't find them. Um, and then when I went to look up her spawn point on the wiki, yeah, as it turned out, you're not supposed to be able to find them in the American camp and I'm still, as far as I'm aware, the only documented... Oh, you can't get off the map from here. That's annoying. Yeah, that's still the only on-record case of finding pants outside of this map. Um, but I just wonder if they can appear elsewhere in like a first initial encounter before um, you go and find them here. So I'm not going to waste your time in the beach area anymore. You're not here just to purely watch me farm and try to find pants. Like, because if I... Obviously in the Let's Play you had the the whole factor of it happened by fluke accident, I was not trying to do it, and then once I did intentionally go to find her again off stream, it took ages. I can't undersell enough how long it took to get that second and third, because I lost, didn't I? Those subsequent encounters with Pants, I'm going to spend one more cycle, see if I can get them to appear, and as soon as I run out of TP, we give up. Um, well, Gaudia looks pretty cool, but yeah, um, I just realised I don't, oh, this is game possession of the ball. I wouldn't have any defenders to take the ball off, or even if um, I did have that encounter, because Mark is not good enough to block their shots at this present time, I can say that, but um, yeah, it'd be just good to maybe over the course of this or anyone else's playthroughs of Inazuma 3 get more information on their spawn points, see if we can get them to appear somewhere other than this main Leocop map and prove that it's possible. Maybe get a bit more insights on what their true encounter rates are, because at the moment basically the information out there is either wrong or I glitched the game. <laughs> um, but we don't know if America was the America camp was the only exception or if there's other places but wow I'm playing super bad by the way and when I do get the sliding tackle okay it did work but, um, somebody in there saying I encountered pants on my second play through the game very early on and got clobbered but you don't remember where you encountered her though um, let me see if anyone else in chat has said where they managed to get that match to happen. Um, Aaron the Bird says, the encounter rate is so weird. Sometimes it's the first encounter, sometimes it's the 20th encounter, um, which is true. And yes, for anyone in chat who's asking, when does the Victory Road beta come out? 11 a.m. UK time, 12 p.m. if you're in the Netherlands or any other part of Europe. For my Belgians in chat, for my Frenchies, there are no Frenchies in chat at the moment, I don't think, but I was about to say for ben Benjamin. She's here! Yes! The tournamentalists! Let's go! But can we win? Because the thing is, what it would be great to do as part of this stream 
I've always put the emphasis on Pants, my goat. She was the one who stuck out to me on this team. But she's got teammates as well. Pants is not... Well, she is just one player, but she's got other players on this squad as well who are all competition winners, just like the real Riku Matsushita. Wouldn't it be great if I could recruit one of the other guys and use them on my squad? <laughs> Welcome in Europe, a young... <laughs> I understood that reference. Um, I think Thunder Beast was pretty much the strongest shot I've got. There she is. Look, look. Ah! I'll try and pass to David Sanford. But if Thunder Beast wasn't strong enough, I don't think anything I've got is strong enough. But here she is doing it with her canonical teammate. I cannot stress enough. These other guys are also Pants' friends. And yes, I just tried to drag my stylus across Pants to go for a block. Assuming she was already my teammate, but no, she's my opponent right now, and I stand absolutely no chance, sad to say. Uh, yeah, Clone Death Zone is 100% going to score, and there's no point in me trying to grind for a second encounter with these guys, because I will lose. I'm way too underleveled right now to be able to beat these guys, and I just don't have good enough moves either. So there we go, Pants has won, and so has, um, really trying to remember the names of the other guys, because one of them comes back, Pants is the only one who comes back in the Go games in her actual design, um, but one of the players on that team meets the same conditions to get into another Inazuma game, like, he got into Inazuma 3 because of, uh, no we don't want Tokyo, we want Central Leocop. Um, let's just find the guy and then I'll give the full explanation. I assume they would be in this menu anyway, but I guess they're not. Again, adding pot, adding fuel to the fire that they're not necessarily just this area. Um, other, so these are, these are just um, story players, mostly, yeah, so they're not in Central Leocot, and I guess that they have no reason to appear in these, or maybe they're not added to the binder because I haven't beaten them? I don't, can I search by name instead? Um, well that will find me pants, it won't find me the other ones, which is kind of what I'm after. And uh, yeah, Pants is just not in the binder, I guess, because we didn't win, which is a shame. Um, basically, one of the players won the Inazuma 2 tournament to get into Inazuma 3 as a reward, and then they also won the Chrono Stones tournament to get into Go Galaxy, or they won the Go 1 tournament to get into Chrono Stones. But instead of just adding the same player as he appeared in Inazuma 3, they instead made him a robot. And they redesigned the character to be basically like Mecha Mark and put him back in the game in a new form. But Pants is the only one who returned um, in her current form. And it's not because she won another tournament, they just clearly recognised she was a fan favourite and brought her back. But she'll be in Victory Road. I don't know about the other three guys, because they have only appeared in Inazuma 11 3. But if Pants came back once, she can come back again. Trust me. Um, meanwhile, Adam asked, what is Death Zone in Arabic or Bulgarian? Well, in Bulgarian, I'm assuming it's like Portugal, where even though the language of the dub is the native one, basically Portuguese dubs are in Portuguese, but the English move names are in English, and the opening song is in English. I am assuming that Bulgarian probably does the same, where it's Bulgarian language but English move names, but... Uh, I don't actually know. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I don't. I don't remember the password. Check my let's plays, bro. Or was it? Was it actually? No, I don't know it. Um, yeah, Mecha Mayfield. There we go. That's the name in chat. But the other, the other two guys on Pants's team. One of them's the goalkeeper, and then the other one is the guy who just scored on us with Clone Death Zone. But I, I want to use one of them. And yeah, see you later, Benjamin or Benjamin. If that maybe Benjamin is just a name in another language that I've never heard of before, which 
would be fascinating. Um, wh why am I going to <laughs> why am I going to magic moves? I've spent this entire stream, all three of the previous streams, just skipping through the dialogue. Why am I now being so explorative? Murasaki, yes, I will be using both Jordan and Janus on the same team. You you saw that one coming. Kappa, Pog, off he goes. Um, but yeah, so. But I'm interested in the Arabic dub, because if they've got a dedicated Arabic opening song, maybe the move names are different as well, but there's... I don't blame myself and Ayers for not knowing about it, because there's a lot of videos on YouTube where it's like, Fire Tornado in all languages, Butterfly Trance in all languages, and it's got like, six or seven different dubs included. Never had Arabic though, we just, we just didn't know. Um... A human tells us, oh, it's probably for Portugal, all of the openings were left in Japanese. Um, that makes sense, but then the English move names were used. Saru says it's a Romanian name. Interesting! Ah, oh, and there he is, confirmation from Benjamin himself. Well, uh... You get to be in you get to be in Dublin now, so I hope you're enjoying it out there. I don't know any Romanians. So I guess I can I can say that I do now. I'll just have to meet a Moldovan next. Um if you don't like it, you can get back on the plane, says Coach Traffic. <laughs> Excellent. Um Hurley Kane took that as a threat. So, yeah, this is all just saying we can now recruit people. I tried to recruit Pants. I failed. Um, Riku Ryu is apparently the name of the clone Death Zone guy, which is interesting because Riku is also Pants' first name. Um, and then the goalkeeper. Yeah. We, we saw it on screen for a moment, but I've already forgotten it. Cool, the, nothing else too much to react to in chat for now, so let's just get back to the Inazuma. We have been streaming for an hour and a half, and I can keep going, because again, let it not go unsaid. The, du the, the demo for Victory Road, the first new Inazuma 11 game in 12 years. <laughs> I think it's 11 actually, which is very ironic. Is this why it took so long? Like, Go Galaxy came out in 2013, Victory Road demo comes out in 2024. Hopefully the real game comes out in 2024 as well. So technically, if you're going by months, we might be at the moment on like 10 years and five months or something, but I bet, here's the prediction, Victory Road releases exactly 11 years after Inazuma 11 Go Galaxy. This is obviously ignoring Inazuma SD's presence as a game, but let's check. Um, I've spelled it wrong, but it doesn't matter. I'll spell it even more wrong just for that. Go Galaxy came out... Oh, God. Well, you know what? That's a fairly achievable release date, actually. Um, my prediction is... Victory Road, the full game, will release on December 5th, 2024 to mark exactly 11 years since the last Inazuma 11 game. What day of the week is December 5th? Because we might have to pick the nearest Thursday to it. Um... Oh, so... Wait! Was it 4th or 5th? Guys, this is real! I've just leaked the release date for Inazuma 11 Victory Road. This is 100% gonna be it. You all agree, right? They are so gonna mark 11 years since the last Inazuma 11 game release. It's even a Thursday. The actual game, the day of the week that new games come out, literally the Victory Road demo is releasing on a Thursday, tomorrow. December 5th, mark your calendars. Because that, to me, feels like the truth 
for when this game releases. Meanwhile, interestingly, this Wikipedia article calls him Arian Sherwind. Even though the game was never actually localised, we've got Arian, Victor and Ricardo in the plot. Even though the game never released in English, so technically they should be going by um, the Japanese names, they they did get their dub names in the anime dub, but there is a separate article for the TV series. So that is where they could in theory use the dub names, and they do in fact have both. But here on the game, it's all in dub names. Now what I need to check is, is it my fault? Because I did edit this article once because it had like a, a release date of to be determined. Okay, never mind. I guess I didn't, unless I was an I, one of the anonymous ones. Um, there was like a point in time or is this just not um... Oh right, so the, the anime article is new, so these are only the edits since they separated it. Because yeah, I did edit this article once because it claimed it was going to release in Europe, which was false. <laughs> um, and so I corrected it on that. Logan says, I tweeted your pants reaction so you can see how crazy you got over seeing a woman called pants in a video game. Go on, let's get it retweeted before we get back to the game. Um, I'll try not to go onto my actual timeline lest something devilish turn up by mistake. I am, I am Iron Man is the tweet that comes up. Only 32 followers. Chat, fix that. This is the guy who always comments very nice things in my chat, in streams, and uh, sent me the Jordan Greenway 11 license. The least we can do is follow somebody who would have England is my city as his location. I guess you must have, uh, is it in the replies? Go on, let's just, right, oh, it didn't show up as a, it's shown up as a reply because you've put my name as the first tag. Well, that's unfortunate for you, but I'm retweeting that version anyway. And yes, I did not win. Um, do I reply saying we are still live? I think we've got enough. We're down to 65 viewers, so let's not waste any more time. Let's do some practice. Yaha! But I've, I figured, I saw in the corner of my eye, I've just tweeted it. I assumed that was people tweeting out my prediction for Victory Road's release date, so... Try not to steal my idea on that one, because I will tweet it <laughs> after this stream. I'm going to make that a prediction tweet. And it's going to be real. Victory Road, so December 5th. Um, but yeah. For now, Dragon Slayer. That's not Astro Gate. And apparently, December 5th is also Sinterklaas in the Netherlands. It's like their Christmas before Christmas, because they don't actually properly celebrate real Christmas. I think they do it a fair bit more now that we're in an internet world where uh, celebrating Christmas is kind of unavoidable, but uh, Netherlands has its own Christmas type tradition um, on December 5th called Sinterklaas. Because, again, if you don't know this, Santa Claus, Saint Nicholas, Saint, uh, Saint Nicholas, was a Dutch guy, or at least he, he was a real guy, right? It's not like folklore. I think there was a real Saint Nicholas in the Netherlands and then the character of Santa Claus, or the real guy Santa Claus if you're uh, if you're in chat under the age of 12 and waiting for Santa to come and pop the presents down the chimney. He's real, um, but for those who disagree, um, yeah. Sinterklaas is the, is the beginning of it all. Um, apparently, they do celebrate Christmas on Christmas Day, just not with presents, because you actually give the presents to each other on December 5th on Sinterklaas. And they're the ones who are right, technically. The way we celebrate Christmas is wrong, because 
the people who best know how to celebrate Christmas is probably the people who invented it, which indirectly is them. So, uh, yeah, interesting. Meanwhile, I don't recall when the next Hector Helio or Devil Army Z cutscene happens, but I think it's like multiple chapters away now because all of the Hector Helio scenes that happen from this point on are like part of the main well, well, script. Well. Because, what sure enough, we... here's Dave Evans meeting his grandson for basically the first time ever, if not actually the first Training time ever. Hector Helio will be in some scenes coming up, I've but they will be scenes Special that would appear in the game regardless, so I don't like have that. to include yes. them in my Bomb Blast exclusive scenes montage. I'll probably end up voice acting them all anyway, just to be safe and cover all my bases, just in case a scene that I don't think is exclusive actually was. Well. Um, Don't you ever want to play the game your way? Uh, see you later, person for whom the sun is rising and the birds, birds are cheap chirping. Uh, I guess that means you're in... Ooh, where would that be? Uh, Australia, I guess? Maybe you're not or maybe a little bit yet. in between? I'm not going to guess. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, time. so... There is, I recall, a Devil Army Z cutscene in the Brazil camp. So that's chapter 9. And I think there's nothing until then, because there's not much to do with Devil Army Z. They're kind of boring, unfortunately, so they don't have much to say. Um, but... That's him. Hmm. So this is the famous Mark Evans. Sure enough, that scene is in all three versions of Inazuma 11.3, and that's his canonical voice, which I've been trying desperately to impersonate. Um, but yeah, Devil Army Z, I think the next cutscene is in the Brazil camp, and Hector is just required scenes only. So I think we're good for a long time now before the next scene, but obviously I'm not going to bother playing Bomb Blast off-stream, because... I could be playing Victory Road instead, so there will be another Bomb Blast uh, stream in the future and I'll keep streaming it until we've beaten the game. It will just probably be a, once again a really long time because realistically the next stream I do on this channel, apologies Hakuogi fans, will just be Victory Road, won't it? Like, that just makes sense. I want to do a Hakuogi stream. Um, Hopefully within the next two months, but anything that's within the next, you know, like two or three weeks is realistically all going to be Victory Road. Um, but yeah, I want to get back into streaming again because I wasn't meant to have a break this long. Just moving house straight into multiple commentary trips uh, outside of the country, straight into the worst sleeping period I've had in recent memory into a bunch of other excuses. Um, just haven't done it in ages. Um, it's been a shame, but want to keep doing it, especially now we've got a new game, sort of. It's a demo, but it's, it's a whole new game system, if you will. Where are we going? Probably not. Well, maybe. Now let's just take a guess. Oh, I did pick the right place. Hooray. Logan says, what's your plans for streaming videos for the demo? Tomorrow there will be a video of just my first reactions playing the Victory Road demo for the very first time. Um, Friday I'll come up with some other video. I want to do at least two daily uploads, because I've been doing daily uploads every day this week, including this stream. Yesterday was my two karaoke covers with Delise of Kiai de Hurricane and... Mina at Cinema Rio. Monday I did the Orion dub um, dub names video it's comparing my made up ones the to the official Kiel ones that got revealed a few weeks later. Um, but yeah, so I want to do at least five videos in a row on Victory Road Week. Um, so I want to do a first reaction and I will be doing some online multiplayer videos. There'll be at least one with TXM, I'm sure. There'll be one on this channel as well. I want to get some of my other friends involved, like Soup Lexi and The Small Coaster, um, to do some of them. 
Um, obviously, going to start off with. I'm not. I'm, I could potentially be open to subscriber battles in the future, but I at least want to start off with people that I'm familiar with personally. Logan, you count as somebody that I'm personally familiar with. To be fair, I don't know if you've ever done voiced, like vocal content before, but um, the option could be there. But the other big idea that I've got for Victory Road um, is the spectator mode. Is a huge um, thing for the for the series because um, there's a there's a couple of Smash Brothers streamers that do spectator mode just as a as a way of making content where they'll just bet all the in-game currency on the in-game spectator mode. But we don't know how spectator mode will work in Victory Road. I don't think it's gonna be like a gambling thing. You know, Smash Brothers spectator mode, you're gambling your in-game currency, which you always have loads of anyway. It's not like you're doing it with microtransactions, you're just doing it with something you have a near enough infinite supply of anyway. Um, but streamers will just like bet everything they've got on a match and just fully take the plunge. Um, I don't think Inazuma will have a built-in gambling system, but it will have a spectator mode. And I'm really hoping it's going to give as little information as possible. Because, like, in the Smash Spectator mode, it gives you, like, players' average win rates. It tells you their characters, which obviously determines a lot. I want to be able to make Spectator mode bets with as little information as possible. And I want to bet, in essence, real money. Um, basically, the name I've got in mind... I want to do at least five episodes of this, and then if people enjoy the series, and I can afford to... I'll keep it going, but that'll be based on feedback. I want to do at least five episodes of what I'm currently calling Tail Bets It All. And it will be at least five occasions on Victory Road where I go into spectator mode and I blindly bet on a team. And if I win, hooray, go me. And if I lose, I have to buy someone the game. And so they'll be, every YouTube comment will be in some form trying to win themselves a copy of Victory Road. Obviously, it's an interesting one but where because the game isn't out yet or even available for pre-order yet, it's one where I'll be making a cost investment and then spending it later. Um, but, yeah, it's one where I want to do at least a couple episodes, like at least five episodes of Tail Bets It All, and let's just say assume... I win two and I lose three. That could be like up to 150 quid that I'm spending on one series. So how long the series continues based on is based on what I can afford to pay several months in the future, but also how much people are enjoying it. But like I'm committing to five out of the gate. So if I get all five wrong in a row, then L for me, I'm giving away five copies of the game and I'll spend 250 quid on it. My bad. Likewise, if I guess all five in a row correctly, then I'm going to look like a bit of a fraud, because how, would, how can I prove I haven't just deleted the footage of the matches where I got it wrong and then just didn't upload it? I think by this point my audience trusts me pretty well based on the level 99 coverage. I always upload my authentic first take in those, and I think that's pretty apparent from just watching it. Um, but Victory Road is going to have a lot of new viewers as well, so I want to gain that trust with new people. Realistically, it's not going to matter. I'll get my very first prediction wrong and I'll immediately give the game away, but um, I know that you guys will believe me, but I want to make sure it doesn't look rigged, and um, that will eventually involve giving away a lot of copies of the game. <laughs> but um, I will still be actively rooting for myself to win in these videos, don't get me wrong, because I still don't want to spend 50 quid every time I make a video. Um, but, yeah, like, TXM's already giving, doing two giveaways of the game just based on his tweets. And I think uh, when he runs a tournament, the first prize for winning that is also... Um, get uh winning his tournament the the first prize wins the game because level five have actively made it a rule you cannot give away prize money for inazuma 11 tournaments like it's actually against the game's terms and terms of service to financially 
offer prize money for winning, but you can give away prizes, and the game itself is a prize. So Tom's giving away copies of the game in various giveaways of his, and also as prizes for his tournaments, whereas I'm just, at the moment, purely giving them away in the form of... Um, tail bets it all the series. I'll obviously be promoting that a lot on Twitter, so that'll effectively feel like a Twitter giveaway, just one where it involves clicking onto my YouTube video first. Um, but I can't... Obviously, don't spoil the content of the video either. It's not like I'll say on Twitter, hey, watch this video, it's a giveaway, because it might not be. You've got to watch the video, and then if I win, too bad for you! The video is not a giveaway anymore! It's only a giveaway if I lose the bet. But that's why I really hope the game doesn't give away too much information on the players and their win rates and stuff. The win rates aren't going to matter that much on day one anyway, because how can you have a, an accurate win rate on day one and day two of the game? Um, but as time goes along, that those win rates are going to become more accurate. Um, but that's what I want to do. But obviously, if I go broke, then I'm not going to do it forever. But um, that's kind of what I've got in in mind. So, day one, I'm going to record the first reactions and do a few episodes of Tail Bets It All and anything else that comes to mind. Probably just doing in the same way as Tom. I'll just do, like, the the match against the preset team of um, you know alias legends or whatever they're called but yeah hope you're looking forward to that and I'm obviously going to be open to suggestion on videos as well so please let me know what you do want to see and maybe one of you will win the game out of it because it'll just be a case of you know YouTube comments um, just name one of the goal scorers to prove you watched at least a little bit or you read the comments pretending to have watched it and um, one comment that happens to involve a goal scorer from the video in the word uh, I don't yeah I've not got all the fine details yet but obviously don't have to determine the winners right away because it's not like you can I can give you the game yet anyway the game doesn't currently exist so um, just keep watching it get yourself in the running and then eventually for every time I get the bet wrong I will give away the game. Meanwhile, this we've made it to one of the peak parts of the game. I love this, where you where you walk around the English camp with one of your managers of choice or Jack. Um, I because it's just I always save here and then whenever I'm playing the game in my free time I just do all four because the the dialogue varies a lot based on what you do, but it still only takes about ten minutes. Um, so I'm going to ask chat, while I'm just catching up on what chat's been saying, anyway, you tell me what you want to see. Do I go around England with Celia, with Sylvia, with Cammy, or with Jack? I know that I went with Jack in my LP as, like, the first run, and then was the one I ultimately went with in the end, but, um, I will say, so out of the three, I've no, never mind, I won't say anything. Um, let's just see what chat wants me to do. Well, it seems pretty clear already. Everyone's saying Jack. I'll give it a little bit longer. Um, just in case. Where is Steve getting the mention? Uh, you could actually recruit him in the Japanese camp now. Um, it's technically two votes for Celia. Obviously, this is like a faux romance thing in the game. Like, if you walk around with S Sylvia or Cammy, they're all like, Ooh, Mark, he's so beautiful. And then Celia just doesn't care. Like, you still have to go through the same girly type interactions where she tries on a dress and you react to, to it. And you can either say that it looks crap or, or yeah, well done, love. Um, but then the Jack and the lads one is just no romanticism implied whatsoever. Uh, Airy saying pick Cam Cam because Celia wouldn't be interested in a guy. She's not, that's what makes it one of the better ones. The Sylvia one is boring and I've already seen the Jack route when I played. 
There's a lot of votes now for Celia, actually. It's between Celia and Jack, and so I shut myself up because the the Jack one I was avoiding for two reasons. One is because it's the one I've done the most, and two is because Jack has a line of dialogue just as an NPC, which only appears if you pick any of the other three. If he's following you around the camp, he doesn't get to say Loki his funniest line in the series. So I'm gonna go with Celia. Um, Celia has been the most popular choice other than Jack and is possibly just the most popular pick anyway. I can't tell how many of these votes are people voting twice and how many are new people, but I'm gonna do this in detail because I love this. I'm pretty sure in my Let's Play I did showcase all four, but it's also been literal years since then, so it's talking about Caleb and Jude! Julep! They've been getting on a little better lately. Well, Caleb's just as mean as ever, but at least they're on speaking terms. That's much better than before. And Sanford's just watching this conversation. Of course, can't wait to see what the Queen's Knights are like. This is, this is my chance to get my uh, posh London accent. The Oxford, is it, shall we say. Oh, I say, you don't know how jolly marvellous the Queen's Knights are. Oh, you poor things. They play the most wonderful football in the whole world. Why they didn't lose the ball once during the qualifiers. And the captain, Edgar. Who the hell is Edgar? Those jokes didn't exist back when I was playing the game for the first time, but you bet I'm gonna make him now. I love Austria. Um, excuse me. No good. She's in a world of her own. I will go and find the Jack line of dialogue, which doesn't appear unless uh, you are... Oh, uh, Ed... Po, 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 um, I will t this line of dialogue um, actually became a bit of a viral tweet in its own right, and you can tell the screenshot was from my videos because I know how to detect my own video quality. Obviously, it's good. I'm not complaining about it in any sense, but it's just it's funny being able to recognise when a screenshot of the game came from your vids. But this horse is all right. Anyone who can stare me out is good in my book. This line is so funny. Just <laughs> this horse is all right. Who says this ho This is the, one of the most detailed 3D models in the whole game. It's more detailed than the actual Pegasus moves themselves. And Archer Hawkins says, This horse is alright. And I couldn't even say it properly in the Let's Play because I still like to give him his bada bing bada boom. Hey, I'm, I'm walking here voice. So I had to be like, This horse is alright. And it just doesn't sound natural at all, but this horse is alright. That's so funny. Love that. Um, you have to go to the clothes shop next, but I'm going to do everything but. I've decided, Mark, I'm going to become an English gentleman. Every puzzle has an answer. <laughs> you see? They had to get one in there, eventually. Professor Layton is in the game as a playable character, but not in Azuma 3. He's only in one Chrono Stones and Galaxy, and then probably eventually Victory Road. But they got the reference in there. Every puzzle has an answer. What a brilliant, and it's totally like the best place to do it. You're on the England camp. He's going to be an English gentleman in his tuxedo. <laughs> and the way he decides to sound British it's to say every puzzle has an answer. It's so good, and that's why I didn't. I was low key, even if Jack. Unless Jack won the option select by a landslide, I was gonna say no and pick anyone else. Because, yeah, I can't. I can't not have that line. Um, but, yeah, let's go into the magic moves and have another Celia exclusive scene. Here's Jude. Ray Dark took me to England to learn how they play football in other countries. This place takes me back. This is also such an interesting line. Campionen, can we stop spamming, please? I know people want the funny YouTuber to acknowledge them, but if you do it too much, you get a negative acknowledgement. Maybe it was an internet blunder. You know, sometimes you can accidentally send the same thing too much, but yeah, if you want a shout out from Tale of the Toast, you've got to appeal to my funny side. You don't spam. 
Um, but yeah, like Jude Sharp has canonically been to the United Kingdom. How many other characters can say that in Inazuma 11? Well, Ray Dark can. <laughs> That's at least two, and Edgar Partinus and the rest of his team have also very much canonically been to the United Kingdom. Um, Sean Frost, accent-wise, has been to the UK, but not in terms of actual travel. Hey, it's me, Andy, from your school, remember? Do you remember Aurelia Dingle? I've heard they're going to make her, like, a main character in a future season. They're, they're calling it Ares? Apparently, all of our managers, like Celia and Sylvia, have gone to other schools, so we don't have any managers left at the Ryman Football Club. So she decided to step up and do it, even though it was kind of one of her defining character traits, that even though she was Mark's friend, she just didn't give a toss about football. Like, Mark never asked her to join the football club, and she never offered to join the football club. Even when you do recruit her as a playable character in the game, she has zero moves and four skills. She is physically incapable of learning an actual move unless you give her a move manual. That is how disinterested she is in football. She is just Mark's classmate, but also Andy's classmate. But in Ares, they made her a manager anyway because she's got a kind of step in for Mark while he's at another school and it makes sense that after a year she'd eventually cave and get into it a little bit and then she ended up just kind of being my favourite character in Ares altogether because her dub voice is just really really good and the art style just totally revolutionised her because she's designed to be a boring looking character but they just, the way you go from original art style to the HD upgrade and she's one of the characters who doesn't get like super tall compared to her original counterpart like Mark and the team because they still keep her quite short and she also doesn't have an anime version to compare back to anyway so she like survived the art style transition the best um but yeah that's my piece about Aurelia Dingle she if you thought she was an original character just for Ares now she's been there the whole time Airy says, guys, I just discovered there's a time skip season called Go. Maybe Andy needs to know about that one as well. But unfortunately, Aurelia cannot be a manager in this game because we're on the original timeline and not the Aries one. Um, but I love Aurelia. She got into my top 20 characters, I think, in the um, when I made the top 100. Maybe it was top 25. I don't know if she'd necessarily still be in the top 20 now, but I'm still... She is like my favourite manager alongside Jade Green purely from an accent point of view. See you later, Logan. I did also see your message earlier about potentially doing a multiplayer match where you said, happy to do it with voice but no face. Yeah, there was never going to be face. Like, I, I do face cam in my videos now because there's actively a space for it. Um, but when it comes to Victory Road and the whole thing is... 1080 by 1920 widescreen. I don't think I'm going to be doing face cam even myself in those videos because there's just no room for it without it like overlapping with something. And I don't have a green screen or anything like that. Um, but yeah, uh, so I'll, I'll be in touch at some point about that. So apparently. I'm in the wrong shop, <laughs> by the way, but it was still still very worth it to get that information from Jude about how he's canonically been to England. Ted asks, would you make an updated version of your top 100 list? The answer is probably no. Like, there are certain things I would change about it. Like, um, for example, I had Sonny Wright on there, would you believe? And I didn't have Arian, which <laughs> stands out as an error. Um... Airy, we will definitely do a video, but your know, mic is not good as comments have pointed out. But you've done a voice video on my channel before, you could always do another in. You're out of all the people I could challenge to a Victory Road video, you're probably the person who would decidedly be the best. So I think that's gotta happen at some point. Well I'll just kind of hit people up out of the blue and see if they happen to be available that day or a little bit later on. Um, have you still not finished wandering around this dump? All these stupid posh builders are doing my head in. I loved every single line of dialogue from Caleb in this video game, and that's why. Oh, we got safety first. Uh, that's one of the moves that got edited into a cool custom mode in the custom move in the Great Road of Heroes mod, which is which is awesome. But there are things I would change about my top 100 characters, but there isn't enough I would change about it to. Um, justify doing it again 
Likewise, there's already stuff that I would change about my T-Pistons ranking, like Shoshin would keep on, would go up. Kiai de Hurricane would go probably even further down, for instance, but there's not so much I'd change that it's worth restarting those kind of things. I think my top 100 is still indicative enough of my opinions to stand. Um, but maybe one day in the distant, distant, distant future, it could be uh, an option, but... Certainly not any time now. All right, I'm Ferdinand Footy, and I'm here to sample some of the fine English fare on offer here in Layercott. Now, fa fancy afternoon, fancy afternoon tea with scones and cucumber sarnies isn't normally my thing, but let's find out how the other half live, eh? <coughs> oh, this scones a bit blooming stodgy. It's lodged in me throat. Oh, I'll stick with brioche. Thanks anyway. I've got to not do the coughing because if I ruin my voice ahead of tomorrow where I've got to record like six videos in a row of um, Victory Road, it's like, yeah, I should try and be a little careful with the stream. In fact, when we've been doing this for two hours, I'll at least get up to the England match. I won't necessarily do the England match in this video because I do need to conserve my voice a little bit for tomorrow's content grind. And we have already been doing it for two hours, which is quite a lot. Brassam saying, Kiaida Hurricane even after doing the cover. Yeah, that's a case where I had it in the second tier. I had it in B tier instead of C tier. And then after publishing, I realised, you know what? Outside of the opening from online... Tell me in chat, do you want to praise Celia with the word yes, or do you want to insult her with the word no? Uh, if you pick no, then you're a terrible person, but I might as well make it chat's responsibility rather than my own. Um, but Kiaida Hurricane, um, it's like, it's not better than Genki ni Rio. It's not better than the, the singular Go 1 opening that I had in the B tier and the one in the middle of that. Uh, yeah, there was a season 3 opening in there as well, which one of the season three had to take some knocks somewhere over the course of it because there's so many season three songs i didn't realize anyone cared about genki nina rio people got mad about that not just in my premiere but like pretty much even even my dutch friend who doesn't even play the games just had one day like watched a montage of all the songs and um got upset about where i put a song that wasn't even in the show but, um, yeah, so I just, I thought that one would be pretty non-controversial because I thought most people hadn't even heard it. Whereas the one from season three, I knew would get a, a bit of a reaction, but that ultimately is one I still kind of stand by that it's not as good as the others and something had to be low. I still like all of them, but um, Kiaida Hurricane, in reflection, is worthy of being bottom three alongside online and... Uh, Gachi de Kato's A, but then doing the cover has helped me appreciate it more, so now it kind of retroactively justifies where I have put it. Um, but I'd still move it down a little bit. Now I'm trying to read chat because there's a lot of people saying no, but a lot of people who are saying no are the same people. Jin has now deleted all of the no's from McDavid, which helps me count it a little bit easier. He is frantically trying to get me to say no. And the only other people who have said that otherwise are Sil, Sil, and Janus. And then the yes voters are Hopper Benjoya, Jin, Saru, I think? Or is that just a response to something else? He says, no. He says, oh yes, and he says, hell yeah. I'm not sure if that's actually a vote or not, but anyway. Uh, the one person who was spamming for no went, uh, went a little too hard with it. So we're going to be nice. Yes, it will look nice in you, Celia. And she says, really? Oh, uh, look, there's something pinned to the label. Label. So she doesn't actually say that much if you praise her on the dress, but she does get really pissed off if you say no. So it's one where you're taking a small reward to avoid a bigger punishment. And um, yeah, it's like, it really... I've, I've read every line of dialogue because I wanted to include it all in a big comprehensive bit of coverage in my main Let's Play. It's like Sylvia and Cammy get all ooh, ooh, ooh about it because they have a crush on Mark. Celia does not have a crush on Mark and they respect that in the game by giving her a really, oh, cheers kind of response. Um, 
and that's all it needs to be. But nevertheless, if you say, no, you will not look good in this skirt, she just gets really upset about it, and it's just very hard to read. So again, I didn't want to say that until after I put the responsibility on chat, but that is why I said if you say no, you're a terrible person because it really genuinely kind of hurts her. And it's so mean that they even include the option in the first place. Um, but I think we've now done everything, which again is why I've been able to take the time to do every option with every character in the past, because it's not a big scene, but this is like low-key my favourite part of the game, or at least one of my favourite parts of it, just wandering around my own country's camp, low-key, half romancing, half rejecting, half hanging out with the lads, <laughs> the managers of your squad. You can choose your own destiny with it a lot. You can either play into the whole romance thing that they're trying to build, you can take the girls and actively piss them off, or you can sack them off and go around with the lads. You've got three very distinct options, and I just love having all of those uh, to go through. I guess you've got this final scene as well, and I already missed the treasure chest. Oops. What do you think is the thing that ties people together most strongly in this world? You know, I sometimes worry that it might be hatred. This line has aged so well! Celia speaks the truth! Top level journalist knows the way of the world. Celia, you will have a future as a journalist, and I've just remembered she doesn't because she becomes a teacher instead, but she's a good teacher, so we'll let it go. Take Jude and hate... Uh, take... <laughs> and hate Dark, for example. They hate each other so much they'll probably never be able to let one another go. And yet, despite all of that, those goggles he wears, he... See? Insight before he gives the full reveal in the anime. Celia is low-key the best option because you get so much insight on Jude and Caleb over the course of this. And also, again, the, the brother-sister relationship between Celia and Jude, because it's meant to be like a plot twist, they never properly develop it. The only time they really go in depth-ish is in the Dark Angels match in the anime where Celia gets kidnapped and Jude's the main one trying to rescue her. And even then, that's not in the games. The match is in the games, but nobody gets kidnapped. You just play them. Um, it's now made Hurley, Jack and Scott my... See, I call him Scott instead of Banyan. I'm learning. Um, but... Yeah, that's something I think they could have expanded on a lot more. To be fair, they actually expand on it-ish in Go. Where, again, they're not talking about their actual relationship as brother and sister that they never got to have properly because they were, like, separated at a young age. Um, but the... Like, Celia is the person that Jude probably has the strongest relationship with in Go, other than Mark himself. And Jude... He has this arc in Go 1 of being a bit of a dickhead as your main coach, and um, Archer Hawkins is the one to kind of level him out a bit and remind him he's being a bit of a tosser. Um, but Celia does a little bit of that as well because she's like on the same team at the same time. So they eventually kind of get there, but I think this scene is one of the only ways to properly get info on those two characters together. So I think it's probably the best option. Um, Sylvia and Se Sylvia and Cammy, they just kind of simp after you a little bit and it's just fine. And then the Jack option is funny. Like, going around the town with the lads is funny. But you also lose out on the Professor Layton reference. Um, right, I'm just going to read chat a little bit before we carry on. Again, I'm, I think I'm committing to not doing the England match on stream today. The stream will end um, when we get up to the stadium. Um, but we'll still do the route to Stadium. Um, Brassum sticking up for Genki Nina Rio. Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to concede the L on that. If people really like it that much, then fair enough. I hadn't really heard it before I started deciding the order of um, the ranking video, but I was already in the headspace when I was determining the order that Season 3 already has too many songs because you've got three anime openings and the Bomb Blast opening, and the Team Ogre opening, that's five <laughs> at a minimum. Um, and, like, the last one of those I still stand isn't, like, the best. It's got that basic Season 3 level of quality, but um, 
the main ones that people love are, are Good Kita and uh, the second one. Hello, Paolo Bianchi, by the way. Um, Genki Nino Rio, I thought would just be overlooked and like when I listened to it I liked it but I didn't like it in any way more than the other season 3 songs I didn't, I didn't think it stood out that much but people love it as it turns out so awesome Airy it's the it's the Bombast exclusive one um, but that's not to say that it was disadvantaged just because I hadn't heard it before making the ranking because I also hadn't heard Mina Atsuma Rio or Sekai Judo Mina Atsuma Rio before I made the ranking and they both ended up 5th and... no, 6th and 7th because I absolutely love them and uh, yeah, again, I think I've said already in this stream what changes I would make to it but I think most of it is still the same, it's just... it's hard to get your opinion across properly in a ranking format when half the songs have to be in the lower half of the ranking, but in reality the amount of Inazuma songs that I really like to love is about 85% of them. So it sucks so much having to put some of them lower down. Um, but anyway, Argentina! It's really good that they do have an Argentinian team in this game because I watched a video essay by a guy called Moon Channel. He's like a real-life lawyer, but also makes a lot of videos about law and video games, but eventually branched out into some other stuff. And one of the videos he made was about Japan's over-reliance on using Brazil as the sole way to, re to represent South America. Um, which makes sense, because Brazil's by far the biggest and most famous country in South America. And Brazil has a huge history with football. You kind of have to have Brazil in a football thing. Um, but even outside of Inazuma, Brazil basically has, to summarize the video, it has a history of Japanese people living in Brazil um, for work purposes. Maybe work is too generous of a term. Maybe it was actually like full on, not by choice type work. Um, but basically in the modern day, Brazil has a large Japanese community living there based on um, stuff in the 1800s and so whenever Japanese anime or Japanese video games choose to represent South America in some form it's always um, Brazil with occasional references to Colombia and then uh, Colombia or Peru and then when Colombia and Peru are represented it's usually with Brazilian stereotypes anyway. Argentina doesn't really get a look in for some reason, except for in Inazuma. They they knew because it's a football game we have to have Argentina and as a result this game ends up as one of the very few true representations of Argentina in a Japanese video game or anime which feels weird but and again that's purely just me like quoting stuff from a Moon Channel video that's not like my own research but He's a very trustworthy guy in the stuff that he does make, so I'm willing to believe it. Um, so it's just a shame, therefore, that Inazuma, after representing South America quite well in this game with two different countries, it then screws it up in Orion by having a second Brazil that's just Samba-themed, just like the previous one was. You know, they, they could have had a... Ted saying they could have had a Suriname team. It's true, they've... There's a lot of Surinamese people living in the Netherlands because they do speak Dutch in the country. And since, since, oh, okay. New member of the team, we've got an aromatherapist. We never got a Dutch team in an Azuma, so maybe we could just have a Suriname team instead. But yeah, Orion, I've spoken in great lengths how disappointing it is that they just, it feels like Akihiro Hino only knows a couple of countries. And when Orion was a chance to have new countries in the series. You, you could either reuse the teams that were in Inazuma 3 with the same players, or to avoid the issue of creating new teams under the same country, you could just pick a different country. Um, but no, they decided to make a new France, a new Italy, a new Brazil, and the Brazil team even had the same theme as the previous Brazil. Essentially, I really liked the match against the Brazil team in Orion. Like, they did a lot of good match stuff there. It's Mizukamiya's first match as well, which helps a great deal. But 
it's a really disappointing representation of Brazil in um, in the team. Adam says, a team of people from Trinidad, which is really ironic because my old housemate, he was called Adam and he is half Trinidad. I have met his mum multiple times and she is the Trinidad half of that relationship. Um, so I know a fair bit about that culture, funnily enough. Uh, but I've obviously never been, but... Um, so yeah, late. I think Orion could have just had a Peru team, it could have had a Colombia team, um, it could have just skipped South America in favour of having an African team because there wasn't an African team at all. Well, there technically hasn't been a real African team in the entire series because the one African team they do have is um, Cote d'Avoir, which is not even a real country. There is technically a South African team that you can play in a competition route, but they're never in the anime. Um, but yeah, the worst trivia I can tell you about Orion is that counting all of the Go Galaxy teams that has like Uzbekistan um, and Thailand as new countries, from both the Asian qualifiers and the world stage, even including the fans match that got cut due to budget and time constraints, the only countries in Orion that has not previously had a team in Inazuma 11 was China and Russia. And that's it. Oh, did I say Cote d'Avoir? I meant Cote de Victoire. Cote d'Avoir is a real country. Cote de Victoire isn't. My bad. Your hand, as is our custom, but perhaps it might benefit from a wash first. <laughs> Yo, Edgar spitting. But yeah, Orion, I was so excited to see what new countries they would introduce, but we had Australia for the third time, South Korea for the third time. It could have literally been North Korea. It would have even quite fit with the narratives of how the Orion teams actually work. Philip Owen getting a line in, let's go, jolly good show. Like, the Red Bison team, that could have just been North Korea and you don't need to change anything about it. But they were, I guess, too worried about being controversial in a season that's set in Russia. Um, but we had, so South Korea three times, Australia three times, Uzbekistan two times, Thailand two times, China for the first time. China was obviously full credit. And then you get to the Nationals. Um, you were going to have France at it for the second time, but the first time in the anime, obviously France has a team in Inazuma 11-3, but they are in the other group, so you don't face them. So that was their chance to have a debut in the anime. And no, it got cut to the point where you only met the captain and the team didn't even get a name. <laughs> and then you had... USA for the second time, but it was the same team, so that's fine. Obviously, they got replaced with Navy Invader, but, you know, the US representative was um, the, the the unicorn guys again. So that's fine if you actually use the same team, but you had technically the second, technically the third Italian team, if you include um, Team D, and they weren't even that... Either their moves weren't that Italian themed, like the fan submitted Tricera Shield. I can forgive that because it was a fan submitted move. Um, but the ones that were Italian themed were so basic. It was, you're really going to make a the Leaning Tower of Pisa falls over shot. We're really doing that. The first four player shot, along with Last Resort, Sigma, ever, is the Leaning Tower of Pisa falls over. Great work. What a brilliant move. Um, then you had Russia for the first time. That aged pretty badly. And you had Brazil for the second time, which was just... Brazil and Italy were the icing on the cake. At least the groups, they set themselves up straight away. America had the actual America team. Uh, Japan was there as a competitor. You had Spain, which was technically like the second Spain team ever, but... Um, the original Spain never got to be in the anime or in the main story of the game. Well, they, they were in the anime for one episode, but they weren't a major part. 
Um, but then the Spain team in Orion does a really good job of being largely Catalonia, which is like a somewhat autonomous part of Spain where Barcelona's in it. They could like, if it wasn't illegal to campaign for independence within Spain, it would potentially have become its own country by now. But it's it's got its own language. It's very culturally different, and the Spain team in Orion is mainly Catalan focused. So I give that the pass. I give America the pass because it is the same team. Japan is yourself, and then Russia was brand new. So that was cool. I found it a shame that the Asian qualifiers only had returning countries and China, and also the teams were pretty unlikable anyway because they were all just cheaters. Um, but I thought once we'd gone through the group stages, we were kind of past that. We we turned a corner, and then the semi-finals were a cancelled match against France. The third Brazil team and the third, well, the second Brazil team and the third Italy team, and the they didn't even have their own unique theme. Like Brazil was samba, but again, while Italy stole the theme from the England team, it was something of Queen again. Basically, one day I'm gonna make an overall thoughts on Orion video, but I need to know how to condense that thought down because I've just given you the whole rant and it probably took about 10 minutes. So, uh, there's nothing new to see in here. Um, no, I don't have the password, mate. Sorry, Andy. Yeah, the semi-finals of Orion disappointed me a lot because you've got, yeah, two repeat teams and then the second match against Russia, which we've already had earlier in the same season. Tails just not going to acknowledge the fake one, huh? says Airy. What have I missed? Have I missed a country in Orion? Or have I missed a country somewhere else in Galaxy? Um, surely not, right? Uh, th there's an Iraq team mentioned in Orion. You don't see them. But it's like technically the closest we get to a new country represented in Inazuma. Even then, Iraq is also still mentioned in the tournament board of um, Inazuma 3 as well. It's just hidden. Even Thailand gets a mention. You know, yeah, no, that adds to the credence that Akihiro Hino just doesn't know many countries because even in Inazuma 11 3, Iraq, Uzbekistan, and Thailand are all mentioned. They are in the qualifiers, they just lose before you get to them. Um, it's a miracle they didn't reuse Qatar, to be fair. But, yeah. It's like Europe and Asia, they only they just cycle through the same couple of teams every time, while also South America can have a maximum of two. Um... Well, we mentioned South America, so, sorry, Cote Victoire earlier. You just probably didn't men notice because I used its dub name, but Cotarl is, to me, Cote de Victoire, because that's what they're called in the English game. So I did mention them earlier. Africa's single bit of representation in Inazuma 11 is with a country that's not even real. Right, so what did the chat have to say about that otherwise? Um, Brassum coming up with a Dutch team named Terra Tulip. I think Tom made a video coming up with a Dutch team once, right? Um, but what else was there? The chariot move in Italy was pretty cool. Yeah, I'll give it that. Um, they're also dunking on this Italy for having freeze shot. Uh, yeah, I don't think the game developers really accounted for the fact that striker was going to have to score with something and they hadn't given him a move because they didn't want to give him... Odin Sword, which would be exclusive, or if they did give him Odin Sword, um, they didn't want to, like, have everyone use the same move, but they just kind of forgot, oh, I guess this guy has to have Freeze Shot, because we didn't give him, we didn't come up with a second Italy Shot, but when they did come up with a second Italy Shot, it was Leaning Tower of Pisa Falls Over, so maybe it's for the best <laughs> that they didn't come up with another one. Um, oh, somebody in chat is... Posing as me? Um, right, who's that actually meant to be? There's loads of messages from this person, so they've clearly only just changed their identity to myself, but um, 
Yeah. Obviously, if I type in chat myself, then I get highlighted. You know, that's the real tale in yellow text, but like... Oh, so when Aerie was talking about the fake country, I guess you were on about the fake tale of the toaster, but... You know, let's let's not actually fool people, because that, that cause, you know, so it's a it's a funny joke. You've got the laugh, but also probably uh, change it back now because some people might fall for it. And you also might forget to change your name back at some point, and then you might comment on something that's not this stream as me, and then people really will think it's me. Um, oh, this is where Nakata appears. Brasson will know this one through and through. Um, obviously have not met the conditions for uh, Nakata appearing, but uh, the task Before the party is over, I got a soul on fire Before the party is over, I got a soul on fire I'm gonna make moves tonight We do have a Belgian in chat, so I hope you got that reference um, But yes, that is all I can think of when I hear the phrase the party's over Party's also over for the fake tale of the toaster. But... Evans, did you learn anything? Oh god, we have been streaming for two and a half hours now. Um, can actually start to feel a little bit of the weakness in my voice now. Um, I should probably call it there. Like I said, we were going to do the route to Stadium, but I guess for the next Bombast stream it makes sense to have a chat with chat during the route to Stadium, and then um, I'm not just ignoring chat while doing the England match and focusing on the gameplay, so I guess, yeah. Okay, stream is going to end um, pretty much now. I'm going to open that treasure chest. So any final comments or questions you want to get in before the stream ends, I'll keep going a little bit longer to see what people say. And then that will uh, be that will be enough. And tomorrow, in a matter of 13 and a half hours, we'll be playing Victory Road. Yeah, I've got to be conscious of all the people um, who've got to wake up early-ish in the morning. Like, 11am is not early, but... Depends how much time you want to dedicate to having breakfast and all of that stuff before actually playing the game. So, oh, and next time is the training facility, and I'm definitely not doing that now. So, yeah, thank you everybody for watching another stream of Bomb Blast, and I hope you all enjoy Inazuma 11 Victory Road Global Beta Test Demo Leave Your Inazuma Mark on the World. And I will be playing it off stream in my own time tomorrow, making you a video as quickly as I can to release later that day. And I will be recording a lot more after that. Um, so thank you for watching. This stream has been really fun. We've maintained a whole lot of viewers all the way through. And to to the fake tale of the toaster, don't forget to change your name back, because if you do spawn into the next one with that name, then we're going to be having words. Airy Hunt says, looking forward to wiki hell tomorrow. Yep, I've got content hell, you've got wiki hell, we've all got responsibilities. But, yeah, stream is done. Thank you for watching. See you in tomorrow's video. Ooh.